What's going on, everybody? Blake and Jeff here. I'm Blake. He's Jeff. And we are back with another video. Video. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about Fallout, the TV series. No, the streaming, streaming series, series on Amazon Prime. On Amazon Prime, based on the popular video game franchise. Uh, but first, before we get to that, yeah. and before we get to our news... yeah. Let's take care of a little business up top. Okay. YouTube. Yeah. Everyone knows it. You're watching this video on YouTube, probably. Mm. Where else would they watch it? I don't know. Did you download it from a torrent site or something? Wow, know. that'd be interesting. Cool. Maybe, Maybe I should yeah. start putting this up on torrent <laughs> sites. <laughs> Just to pretend like we have some sort of clout that requires exactly. a legal download. Exactly. Yeah, sure. sure, why not? Uh, do the YouTube stuff. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Leave comments. You know, all the happy yeah. horse shit that, you know, helps us in the algorithm. Yeah. Uh, and if you want more content, go to patreon.com slash Blake and Jeff. We got all sorts of, well, not really all sorts. Of stuff. We, got, we got what, like a you tier? Get, you get stuff early. We got a tier or two. Mostly it's just to support us. Yeah. That's really all it is. To support us, to get early stuff, check it out. Yeah. Uh, patreon.com slash Blake and Jeff or link in the description below. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. What was the news this week? Well, actually, two weeks. It's actually for two weeks because I was sick last week, so we couldn't record. Yeah. So there's a couple of things in here from last week and then one from this week. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll start with, actually, I think it's two from this week, two from last week. Um, let's Perfect. do, I'll just start at the top, man. Let's go for it. One Keanu Reeves has been announced as the voice of Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Perfect. I mean... Perfect. Why not? Shadow the Hedgehog uses a gun. Exactly. It's John Wick the Hedgehog. Yeah, give me a gun. There you go. Perfect. I mean, no notes. It's it's, it's kind of quiet, right? It's yeah. got that like... Yeah. It's yeah. great. It's perfect. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think it's it's probably good. Now, I didn't watch the second Sonic movie. I didn't either. I oh. liked the first one fine. I heard the second one was good. The second one I heard it was good. I'd need to probably watch it at some point, because now I need to watch the third one. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I don't want to be lost. No, I mean, it'll be in... <laughs> well, we're going to have to watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2, then we're going to have to watch the I'm Knuckles. not watching Knuckles. We're going to have to. I'm not watching Knuckles. We're going to have to. Ugh. <sighs> Why? Then we can watch Shadow the Hedgehog. I don't. I don't want to be that invested in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. <laughs> yes, you do. I don't. That's why I didn't watch the second movie. <laughs> True. True. Man, who is he gonna voice in the next Mario movie? <laughs> A good question. Yeah. Um, if Keanu Reeves voices Waluigi, <laughs> I will fucking shit my my. I was about to say. Your britches? Shit. Or I was about to say shit my dick off, and I was like, "That doesn't make sense." But hey, I mean, that's how much I would be yeah, excited. That's, what I'm saying. that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but I'm down for this. Obviously, it's Keanu. Yeah, I'll, I'll take him however we can get him, and uh, yeah, I, th I think it'll be interesting. And again, it did its job. It's getting me to say I need to watch Sonic the Hedgehog three now. Yeah. <sighs> I, I think I was already going to when they announced Shadow. I was kind of like, you got to go see for Shadow. I guess. Because you have to see how they handle it. Sure. Because he's such a fucking bizarre character in the Sonic universe. Yeah. Even in the games, it's True. weird. Hmm. He like fucks a, fe like a real female woman and shoots guns and shit. I mean, that sounds like Keanu Reeves to me. Yeah. And he's got like a sassy attitude. So that's not really Keanu. He's like emo though. But that's Keanu. Yeah. It's like emo sass. If you ever want to see that... Go watch a movie called Feeling Minnesota. Mm. He's very emo in that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's interesting. Uh, okay, well, I'm on board. So, Sounds there great. you go. Uh, now, in this next one. Yeah. This one was a shocker to me. Although, we'll talk about why it might not be a shocker. Uh, Liam Neeson. Let let me back that up. Oscar-nominated actor Liam Neeson mm -hmm. will star in a new Naked Gun film 
co-starring Pamela Anderson, directed by Akiva Schaefer <laughs> from The Lonely Island. I just, <laughs> I don't get it. I get it. Okay, I mean, number one, I get why Akiva Schaefer would be involved in this. Obviously. That yeah. makes sense yeah. to me. If you go watch any of the movie stuff they've done, it makes total sense why they would be in The Naked Gun. Watch MacGruber. I mean, True. I know that's Yorma, but, you know, yeah. they're all kind of... But they're of, all like, you know... It's the same sense of humor. They all, it's the same, same brain, basically. Yeah. Um, but Liam Neeson... That now, I, I understand Liam Neeson. I do. From Ted and... and no, from... From what? The Warwick Davis thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From Life's Too Short. Life's Too Short, yeah. The discussion that he had, like... It's the the yeah the AIDS bit is it's hilarious it's, yeah it's comedy it's gold. so good and he's following in the footsteps of of Leslie Nielsen who at one time was a dramatic actor yeah who then transitioned into spoof comedy and became like the straight man yeah like you didn't you didn't watch a million ways to die in the west i started it we watched the first 20 minutes and then she wanted me to so it you off. didn't even see liam neeson i didn't see liam neeson or at least not i mean his, i saw in the trailer yeah stuff. not his comedy stuff yeah. but like yeah in, in that movie like you could tell he's he's game for pretty oh, much anything. i know he is i yeah. know and it's fun like it is fun seeing him do comedy because he's so sure he's got that such a serious he's got the gravitas yeah the taken exactly that's all you when you see him you see taken right yeah, I, I, Killer. I mean, again, I get it. Yeah. But look, I've seen the man in Dark Man. Yeah. And let me tell you, he's wacky in Dark Man. Yeah. So I could see him doing this. Pamela Anderson? That's the one that's holding me up. I mean, look, she's been through so much that I get that she would just be like, you know what, I'm game to do whatever. Yeah. We'll just have fun with it. If you're gonna do it, I guess sure. Why not? It's just it was when when it when I announced it and it re- revealed all the stuff involved and who was in it. I was like, what is going on? But then I thought about some more, and I was like, you know what? I'm game. Let's see what they do. Yeah, I'm always down for some Lonely Island stuff. Let's see what they do. I used to love the Naked Gun films, man. Josh and I would rent those from the local video store. Just to have a laugh. Yeah. So, hey, I'm here for it. Um, I'm going to skip down to the final one, and then we'll go back to the other one. Uh, Dan Harmon and Heather Ann Campbell. Yeah. Lately, the driving force of Rick and Morty um, are, are rewriting the live-action One Punch Man adaptation for Sony Pictures. Yeah, so she announced this on the Get Played podcast. Yeah. And I, my jaw dropped. Yeah. It is her, like, one of her favorite anime. She's been talking about that manga since they started the podcast, like, two years ago or three years ago, whatever it was. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's one of those, like, Tom Holland, he manifested <laughs> right sort of things. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, like wild. the only thing she talks about more than One Punch Man is like Chainsaw Man mm. and Naruto. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, sounds like, you know, at least she's a fan. Yeah. Um and I guess Dan Harmon is a fan. I guess. Unless they're just a package deal now. Yeah, maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe he's just maybe a, they wouldn't give it to her unless he came along. Yeah, like he's just he's just like like because of his name. She's a know. fan, but I don't know. Yeah, either it's way, weird. It doesn't. Yeah, it's doesn't weird. Make sense. Um, or maybe it's just that you know she kept talking about it so much that Dan Harmon was like, you know what, you have passion for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with you on this. I don't know. It's a weird pairing to me. It's very weird. Um. It's, it's, I hate to say it, but it's one of those things that I think is going to fall apart Mm. because there was the, the Doughboy's friend, uh, Evan Susser and his writing partner, the guys, they, they, two of them wrote, um, 
fist fight, mm. the, you know, the Ice Cube mm-hmm. and whatever movie. Um, they were the original writers for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, mm. and then it like fell apart, and they found new writers. Right. So I'm like, I in mean, the yeah, last, and, and they were attached apart. for a long time. Yeah. So like at the last minute, it could fall apart. If yeah, it definitely could. I mean, this is a rewrite. They already have a script. Yeah. Um, they are just coming in to retool it and like get it in line with what Sony really wants, I guess. So it's not completely starting from scratch. But we don't know how much they're actually going to change. Um, I would imagine it's probably a fundamental. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it could always fall apart. Anything they're involved with could fall apart. But. Yeah, the way the way that, well. Yeah, I don't want to speak out of turn. But the, the way that she announced it made it sound like like they're like writing it. Like they will receive writing Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. They They are. That's okay. what it is, basically. So they must be rewriting a lot. Then. I'm I'm sure they are probably doing a full rewrite. Okay, you know, yeah, because yeah, they're, like they're not like coming in to doctor the script. Right, right. Like the way she like, announced it's a it rewrite. was, yeah, the way she announced it was like, I can finally say right. this. Like they knew the you know Mick yeah, Weiger yeah. and friends knew and and they're all excited and stuff. But yeah, she they're like it's uh, you know. She's like, we are we are writing the One Punch Man movie. Yeah. She's like, I will be the writer for that movie. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I've never watched it. Mm-hmm. Have you watched any of One Punch Man? Yeah, I've watched like the first half of the first season. Okay. Um, is it going to translate into a movie? Um, here's the problem. It can, but it also has... It also has that shonen fighting anime yeah. feel. It has the Dragon Ball Z, the Naruto. It has the huge action yeah. that like is going to be so fucking hard to film yeah. without like copious amounts of ugly CG. Right. Okay. <laughs> it all it all depends on how she it depends on how she writes this because so, she she loves she leans heavy heavy any anime that she watches she leans heavy into the comedy of it which makes yeah, sense with makes rick, sense. And rick and morty and, yeah everything she's done her improv background like that's yeah sure she loves the the general just idea of one punch man the the same with like solo leveling the, the character who has like who is nothing yeah. and then just becomes like ridiculously overpowered yeah and like that is you know and then one punch man is funny like it is a it is like a half comedy half you know yeah. Okay. Fighting thing. But it's just, I mean, like, he, he fights, like, monsters that are the size, the, like, kaiju, like, the size yeah. of Godzilla, whatever, and, like, punch it, and then, like, the whole back of their head, like, explodes, the moon, yeah. like, explodes. Like, the action is fucking insane. So, like, that part is going to be weird. Because yeah. even, even One Piece, when you get further into One Piece, the action becomes, like, cosmic. Yeah, on a scale of like insanity, dragons, yeah. shit from different dimensions and stuff. Like it, it's just insane. And I'm like, I don't know how the fuck they're gonna do One Piece. Yeah. Once they get past a certain arc, I, yeah. I don't understand how they're gonna do it. Mm. But we'll see. We'll see. Chopper, you know, CGI yeah. characters. I that's, that that's easy. That's these easy. Days. Like yeah. you throw money at that, you'll get it. Yeah, I mean, we've had Gollum and Jar Jar yeah, yeah, yeah. back in early you know in the 90s 25 really. years yeah <laughs> so yeah it's just the it's just the action it always comes down to that dragon ball z style action yeah. of flying energy blasts that sort of shit that just doesn't translate to live action it just mm. looks goofy yeah hmm. okay. so hmm. but again them writing this has nothing to do with how it's going to look right that's what i'm saying like i'm i don't mean like the writing i just mean like conceptually because here's the other thing you're talking about doing it in a two hour movie yeah my feeling on you can get like this could be a part one one of two or three yeah of whatever whatever. because like the story especially the first like season is a lot of kind of like repetition like you don't really get there is like an overarching plot but like you can really focus the first movie on just building up um, what's his name? Saitama. 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 Yeah. Saitama. Um, building up like him, and then like he meets the. I always forget the dude's name. He's like a robot guy, and he becomes like his like 
like little apprentice or whatever. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Yeah, and like so like you can build up just that and then like not go beyond. Okay. And it's just them like fighting you know, like one a couple of like monsters, but it's really the focus of like him and him being like depressed that like the world, you know, that there's no villains like strong enough to take him out and how mm-hmm. bored he is with everyday life and whatever. I mean you you know sure. which I'm sure is what they're gonna focus on. Right, probably. Okay. So in that case, yeah, you may minimize the amount of action. That's what I'm saying. Then, like it might be character for the beginning. Yeah. And then maybe in the second, third movie, whatever, if you get to that, you can go a little wilder on the action. Yeah, I feel like anime fans are not going to like that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they should be used to it by now. <laughs> Live action yeah. anime, by and large, barring a few recent developments, has been pretty spotty at best. Yeah. So... And again, we're talking about an Americanized version. Yeah. So. Yeah, which, I mean, we did One Piece. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it can work. It can. I don't know. Saitama and, and the other characters, though, they're all Japanese. Yeah. So it's like, that is a little more difficult. One mm. Piece is very, like, yeah, ambiguous. It's like, more, like, eclectic. Yeah. Yeah. And even 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 uh, Oda has like said that like the characters are whatever you know race, and he's like, oh, I kind of was inspired by this and this, and it's yeah. so, like you can literally make it whatever you whatever want, you but want. Yeah. yeah, like hard manga, like it's all it's all Japanese, yeah. So making you know Death Note American and stuff is like weird, yeah. I is was... this going to be set in Japan? I have no idea. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. I mean, number yeah. one is, uh, will they get the script done? Number two is, will they actually film it? Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Right now, it's just, we're writing this movie. Yeah. Who knows if it'll actually get made. But again, they're writing a My Hero Academia movie. They're apparently back, you know, 10 years ago, they started writing a Naruto movie that went nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they've been writing movies, yeah. anime movies, of course. forever, sure. and they never go anywhere. Yeah. So. But again, it developments recently yeah might have them looking more towards no we want to make this yeah we want to get this out there there we f- we know for sure there is a market for it for good properties yes so yeah. but it's sony so it is sony. who knows <laughs> and unfortunately they now own all of anime <sighs> pretty much <laughs> yeah all right. Well, we'll watch this one and see what happens. Yeah. Um, and then my final piece of news is that Quentin Tarantino has apparently abandoned his 10th and reportedly final film, The Movie Critic, for undisclosed reasons. Hmm. Uh, they were actually already in pre-production on it. It was planning to shoot this summer. And it was going to star Brad Pitt as a... And this was the new information that we got was he was going to be playing a small-time critic who writes movie critiques for a porn magazine in the 70s. And I was like, damn it, I want to see that. (laughs) the hell? Hmm. I don't know why. Nobody knows why. Like, I don't know if he just wasn't feeling it afterwards. So he's not abandoning directing a 10th film. No, he's abandoning this film specifically and has said it will not appear anywhere in the future. Like, because Hateful Eight... The script got leaked. He threw a hissy fit because it got leaked and said, I'm not going to make it now. Then he went and had a reading in L.A. They did a staged read of it. It got a lot of people interested again. And he was like, you know what? I will film this. Apparently, that is not what is going to happen with this. He is shelving it completely, Hmm. basically throwing this in a drawer and never opening that drawer again. And I'm like, why? (laughs) What the hell? I don't understand. Yeah, his weird his weird it's obsession so weird. with like only directing ten films is yeah, I know. kind of annoying. It is. I agree. Um but I don't know. Apparently he's not doing this one, so maybe he got that Star Trek movie off the ground. <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Well. Maybe uh, Kill Bill Volume Three. I mean, yes, there, but you know, it doesn't matter. He already considers Kill Bill all one long movie, no matter how many parts it is. Because okay. he's already said Kill Bill 1 and Kill Bill 2 are one long movie. Okay, sure they are. So now if he made a three, he would just be like, yeah, it's just another part of that one. It's not my 10th movie. It's... He's got his 
technicalities and sure, yeah, legal yeah. workarounds. So you can make like Pulp Fiction <laughs> 2 and be like, well, it's of all, course, it's, it's all, all one of, movie. Yeah, it's all part of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Which, by the way, Pulp Fiction, 30th anniversary of this year, hmm. the, the cast got together at the TCM Oof. screening or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Willis was not there, of course. Of course. Uh, but everybody else was there. So it was kind of cool to see them all get together and hang out 30 years after they made that fucking movie. That's insane to me. That was 30 years ago. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Anyway, so now, uh, again, it's up in the air what he's going to do for his final film. Hmm. But he's just kicking that can down the road. I think at this point he's not going to make it until he's like 80. Hey, well, you know, <laughs> like a George Miller. Like, come yeah, back exactly. And, yeah. Come back, take 20 years off, come back. Make your final film. Make a final movie and then, and then say, yeah, you know what? I'll make a prequel to that one. It's actually part of the still in the same, yeah. Yep. Um, but, okay. I was bummed. I was interested in this one. I wanted to see what he was going to do. Yeah. Huh. But, oh well. Hmm. But that's all I got for news. There were some other things, but I decided not to talk about them. Okay. Like, we don't want to talk about Harvey Weinstein getting his uh, <laughs> conviction overturned. <laughs> only in <laughs> yeah. only in, New York, only in New York. And it's really just a retrial. It's not overturned completely. Yeah. So... But I always told you he was innocent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. Let's move on, move on, move on. No, we're going to bask in that one. <laughs> Jesus. Mm, yummy, I love it. Harvey Weinstein? <sighs> uh, an, 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 hmm? Hmm? What you going to do? Hold on. How am I trying to phrase this? Mm, very carefully. A misunderstood. No. Nope. No? <laughs> <laughs> Artie blew it. Oh. <laughs> Everybody understood what Harvey Weinstein was doing. <sighs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, more than likely, he'll be convicted again anyway. It won't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and he, even if not, he'll be convicted in L.A. So. He, looks like a, he looks like a fucking monster. Dude, that even dude's going to die soon anyway. Yeah, Jesus. even those pictures, I'm just like, dude, don't like, you look like you're on death's door. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just go away already. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so, that's it for news. Okay. Uh, we do have some trailers, though. Yeah. We have a few trailers. We'll save the big one for last. Yeah, we'll do that one last. Do you pick whichever one you want to talk about first? Um, I mean, let's talk about Long Legs first, because I don't know what the hell I watched. Yeah. But that's good. Yeah. That's what we talked about with Cuckoo. That's what we talked about. Cuckoo looks great. Knowing how to make these trailers. And it was, it was neon again. Mm, okay. They're the ones that there are doing go. it. They know how to make a trailer that just makes you go, what the fuck did I just watch? I got to see the movie. Yeah. Now, this one, I don't necessarily feel like I have to see I based have to on see, that trailer. I have to see another trailer. I want to see another trailer because that trailer didn't even show you Michael Monroe and didn't show you Nick Cage, and they're both in it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. They play like FBI agents tracking this fucking thing. I was like, holy shit. Okay. Yeah. I'm more interested. So, and it's Oz Perkins, who's done some pretty good stuff. Um, he's he's kind of in that, like, uh, horror-adjacent, like, thriller mm, kind okay. of genre. Um, he's Anthony Perkins from Psycho. It's his son. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm down for a, uh, ho- like, a, especially if it's, like, a, a crime. I think it's, like, a serial killer kind yeah, of thing. Like it's, like, crime, a Silence of the Lambs. But also, thing. like, but with like, horror. Yes, it definitely has horrific-looking elements to it. That's tight. I'm, I'm into that. Yeah. It's kind of like what I think they were trying to do with Spiral. Yes. Where it's like we, we're trying to we're trying to go through the detective route, yeah. but still have the horror element there, and it just didn't work. It fell didn't apart. Didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. That's but true. Yeah, it looks, it this looks, one looks interesting. Yeah, and has, again, it's just that trailer that makes you go, what? It's creepy. Let the, me see it again. The person talking. Yes. It's freaky, and it's I don't freaky. I don't like what he's talking about. And then the, the quick flashes of stuff. And then the lean at the, the end. The lean at the end into the fucking frame. Yeah. But you it's don't see anything? Just creepy. Yeah, it the, stops like right yeah, here. The beginnings of the lean in. But the long hair and shit. Oh, like, she oh, she's geez. there. Mm. Uh, I just, oh. Yeah. I like yeah, it. It looks creepy. So okay. effective. Yeah. All right, what else? Um. Okay. Let's do. Let's do blink twice. blink twice. All right. So this is Zoe Kravitz's directorial debut. She also co-wrote it. Yeah. 
Um, obviously, because she's Zoe Kravitz, she has a lot of friends, and a lot of them came to be in this movie because there's a lot of people in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, cast looks good. The cast looks great. The the idea of like a rich billionaire's island where crazy shit's gonna happen is topical, mm-hmm. and Channing Tatum as a weird psycho looking motherfucker, I'm down for it. Yeah, I'm always down for people that generally play the good guy or the hero playing against type. Yeah, my only worry is that this is going to be a glass onion, potentially kind of like rip off where it's the the payoff may not be there, the the big reveal or whatever. But maybe maybe it is. Yeah, it, it, potentially we don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe it's a legitimate like thriller with a yeah. it doesn't have the twist ending, but with a no. with a ending. But yes, an effective ending. Yeah, without. F- Trying to flip the genre on its head or whatever, just right. Just give me, give me. Sometimes a good you just want to play within the genre boundaries. Yeah, baby, <laughs> that's okay. Sometimes you just want to, you just want to watch a good movie. Yeah, um, but it looked pretty. I mean, it looked nice. Hmm? Um, and yeah, I think everybody's gonna bring their A game. So I'm interested. I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, Hitman. Hitman. It looks fun. Yeah, it, it looks fun. Yeah, link later. It's got the yeah, very very heavy on the character study element of it. Yeah, which I mean, yeah, of course, because it's a guy playing exactly a guy playing things. Dudes. It's Glenn Powell who is, I mean, obviously having a moment right now. He's yeah. everywhere, um, but I like that he co-wrote this with Link later. Mm-hmm. So he's invested in it. He probably worked with him, came up with the idea, and yes, it's kind of a it's it's that usual actor showcase. To be able to say, yes, I'm being in this, but I also get to show all the different things I can do. Mm-hmm. But it looks like a fun kind of romp. And it, you know what it looks like? It looks like the other Linklater true story Bernie that he did with Jack Black, where he played like that funeral director who like befriended an elderly woman, I think it was. And then it was weird. It was like a black mm-hmm. comedy. And this looks similar in terms... This leans more into the comedy aspect of it than the dark aspect, but... Yeah. Um, and Adria Ohana. Oh, please and yes. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I like Glenn Powell. Yeah, he's... So far in everything I've seen yeah, him in, I, I like him. He's fine. He's I like, like he's got lot. that, like, every man kind of... Yeah. Even though he's obviously not an every man, exactly, he's a, he's a gorgeous man. Yeah. Um, I need to. You know what he reminds me of? Huh. Young Tom Cruise, which is why he's probably okay. That's why he's in Top Gun Maverick. But he reminds me yeah. of a young Tom Cruise. He's very. Uh, he's a pretty boy who's who is willing to play into that, mm-hmm. but you can tell there's stuff underneath the surface. Yeah, and that I would not be surprised if later in his career he starts to play a little darker. He starts to potentially play a bad guy. A little action. A little action. Yeah. Yep. I could see him going the Tom Cruise route. Next Bond. No, Bond needs to be British. Yeah. <laughs> That's the it, one thing everyone usually agrees on. Have you heard? He should the, be British. The, have you heard they're kicking around Henry Cavill again? I have heard it. Ba- well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Because <laughs> I think my my thing that I watched plays into that heavily. Okay. Um, but yes, they are talking. I mean, it's still. Aaron Taylor Johnson is still the front runner, supposedly, but that yeah. yes, they are still thinking about Cavill. Yeah, I was like reading the well, yeah, we'll get into it, but uh, I was reading that like that it came from like a very like reputable source that like he's not he's not just like back in the like discussion, but like there's movement with him, and I'm like, oh, so I'm like, it, it could be that like they're they're really maybe could they're be. doing tests or something. They or, could. Yeah. You never know. I mean, again, until it's announced, yeah, anyone could still be the person. Yeah, true. Really. Um, but in my opinion, either one of them would be fine, Yeah, and I would be happy with either one of them. Yeah. Henry Cavill's fantastic, and I love Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think he's great. So I'm fine with either of those. And even if it was someone else, we'll talk about it. But I think it's probably one of those two, honestly. Um, okay. Let's talk, uh, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's talk The Exorcism. The Exorcism. This one, okay. So it's so weird because I yeah. was like, I, don't know what you're gonna I say. was like, a few years ago, wasn't he? In a, it was like last year. Yeah, it was only like a the, year or two The ago. Pope's Exorcist. Yeah. 
I thought this was like a sequel to it. So then I start playing it and it, it goes through and uh, lo and behold, it is not. Oh. <laughs> it is just a completely different thing. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Wes Craven's New Nightmare in that it's about, because that movie was about them making another Nightmare on Elm Street movie. So it was on set watching them do it mm. while Freddy was like being manifested in the real world. Is that five? Um, Because we are only up to, we've only watched four. We just, I think it's six. I think it's, because hold on. No, because, hold on. Because there's four numbered ones, two, and then it becomes... Dream Warriors. two after. Dream Warriors, the Dream Master. Yeah. Is number four, and then... Dream Master, then it's... Isn't it... Hmm, five is... Is it Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare? Yes. Okay, so then six was when Wes Craven came back and rebooted the thing, and it, be, and it, was, just, it was called Wes Craven's New Nightmare. But it was about him making another Nightmare on Elm Street movie. But it's technically part of the Elm Street saga? Yeah, it's saga. part of the Elm Street saga, technically. But that's why they didn't number it or anything. Well, they didn't number the the final one either. Freddy's Dead final. Yeah, yeah. Right. they didn't do it five. Hmm. Unless that one I'm pretty six. sure it was. I think it was Freddy's Dead five. The f- Wait, Nightmare on Elm Street five, Freddy... I don't know, maybe not. Yeah, it's not numbered because I looked them. I, I, okay. I had to get them all. But anyways, whatever. We, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it just reminded me of that because this is about them making a movie about yeah, an exorcism. It's literally about. It's literally <laughs> the, it's the Scream team that's making it. I know. Yeah, so it's just Scream again. It's them making yeah. a horror movie, and then I horror know. things are happening on the horror set, and you're like, I was like, okay. <laughs> but that's what I wanted to know. Like, I went back. I, I didn't look it up. I should have. I should have looked up to see because when it said from the like creators of Scream or the producer was it the producers of Scream or the creators of Scream? I thought uh, it was the creators because I was like, is it Kevin Williamson? I don't because that's the creator I of Scream. I literally think it said from the team that brought you Scream. Now is it but the like new that. team that brought you Scream or I the original think. team that brought you Scream? Yeah, or the one that brought you the TV show Scream? Right. <laughs> Who knows? Because that's all. That's a whole different teams. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I, don't know. I was just like, what the hell? Because that blew my mind that it wasn't at all related to the Pope's exorcist. Yeah, it's just like, what is with, with him and I don't know. I don't know. Weird. I don't know. Hey, baby. Riley's here, guys. She's ready for her close We got a dog in the studio. She's hanging out. She's hanging out. You can see her right there. You can kind of see her face. Sort of. Although when I put the... Uh, yeah, when you put the, the color thing on there, you won't yeah. be able to see it. When I color correct, you probably won't see her. But that's okay. Uh, I see her. Um, okay. I see you. Take so I guess here's the question. Me. Does it look interesting? No, I don't give a Not fuck. Not really. No. It looks uh, generic. Yeah, it looks whatever. It, it looks like Scream, but an exorcism instead of, you know. It looks like they're trying to kick off the franchise. Yeah, of course they I are. don't think anyone's here for it. Probably not. I think I get, they need to stop trying to do franchises with him. Yes, they do, especially horror franchises. <laughs> I also think, I've said it before, and I'm going to stick with it, I think exorcisms are silly now, and I don't think people are into them. Yeah. I, I think, I honestly, I think that if you if you make a movie nowadays with a heavy religious lean, yeah. it doesn't do well because there are not as many, there just aren't as many religious people anymore, especially Christians. Um, so it's just like, I mean that's not true. There are ten, there are tons of them. The question know. is, do they care about watching a movie like this? Right. I don't know because like it gets the exorcism, the exorcist believer does not lend to this. Yeah. Not very many people went and saw that movie. No, and like it got laughs. Like yes. people were like, oh, good, like like oh god, and yeah. I mean, and but like, that's what I'm saying. I think that instead of making it a straight horror movie and making it more in the scream like vain it might attract more people to it because they're not Maybe. taking it seriously yeah and it could always go the angle that like someone is fucking around on set true that there's yeah. like there's someone doing one well, no because in the trailer no. he it's bends true, over backwards yeah. and he gets yeah 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 it sounds like he actually gets you know a demon inside of him 
even when you say it, it sounds fucking stupid. Like there, there's just like a lot of the discussion because I remember like seeing online a lot of the um, exorcist believer stuff, like comments where people were like, "If you truly believe in like, if you're a grown ass adult and you believe in demons, like you're you're fucking like you know." I mean, people were like me, and they're like, "You're like an R word." Like, I mean, how can you possibly believe in this shit? But but there are tons ghosts. of people that believe in ghosts. Too. Right, it's like the people, same fucking thing. But it's not though, because it is. well, no, it's not because ghosts. Ghosts is a secular belief. Demons is strictly through religion. It's strictly like you you. Demons only exist because you believe in God and the devil and angels and that sure. sort of shit. Which people now are like, all of that is fucking ridiculous. Now, as someone. Outside of all of that, yeah, I think ghosts is fucking ridiculous too. They're all ridiculous. They're all ridiculous. I'm like, I'm like, I agree with you, but I also think that if you believe in ghosts, you're a fucking moron. I'm not gonna say you're a moron. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna say you're a fucking moron. There, well, there's no such thing as ghosts. We we don't know. We know. <laughs> we live in a simulation. There are no ghosts unless the person programmed them. Fuck. Exactly. Rogue programs or actual programmed. The twins. Yeah. Exactly. Right. See. Ghosts do exist. See? They could. Well, we there's don't know. the ghost in the machine, ghost exactly. in the shell. Ghost in the shell. You're right. Even if we live in a simulation, there Ca- are ghosts. Casper the friendly ghost. I mean, there. Come on, there's ghosts everywhere. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, it just doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me. No, I just. I don't. I don't. I find just. Exorcism. I just thought it was so bizarre that he was in another exorcism movie a year later. Yeah. I don't find him interesting. I don't find him scary. I just find no. him like kind of. Yeah. Annoying. I'm like, why are we doing this again? Yeah, it's goofy. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm gonna fuck your. Hey, come in here. Your mother's in my ass. And you're like, what, what is this? Like the 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 demon says the stupidest shit. Well, yeah. It's like the that's like all the sudden, part I think that probably has not aged well, right? Because I don't think there's anything you can say anymore that shocks people. No, not the at way all. that it did in 1972. You could not say anything to me that would shock me. Yeah. Now some people are some people yeah, are some like people are that way, but I think sensitive. by and large because of the internet and because of the yeah, I mean the only thing you can say now is honestly like and this is being truthful, I'm not trying to be like funny, but like if you made an Exorcist movie now and the demon was like a white girl and she's saying like racist shit, dropping n bombs and stuff, I think that's sure the, again I think that's the only shock factor that you yeah can really... and it's shocking in a different way it's shocking in like a oh this is like yeah. inappropriate kind of way of like, like oh make her stop make her stop yeah like ooh, yeah. like yeah but not yeah her being you know the old exorcist being like your mother's in here sucking cocks or whatever it's like yeah. well your mom probably does she probably has sucked cock before in her life yeah I mean, every you know not every woman but not every, every, every mom most of them most moms yeah, most moms have yeah at some point so I should be your mother. Mom. You watching this, your mother and father have had sex before, and your mom has probably sucked upon his peen. Yeah. He's probably licked upon her veen. Yeah. They probably eaten each other's butts out. Guys, these are the hard truths you gotta face you as gotta you face grow up truth. in life. At yeah. one point, she pulled the condom off, right? That's how you're here. True. That's true. She said, no, fucking dump it in me. Make a direct deposit into yeah, my puss. That's exactly what she said. Those are her exact words. And he cream pie the shit out of your mom. Yeah, there you go. Your dad cream pied your mom. Deal with it. Well, that'll be the title of this video. <laughs> That's a fucking t-shirt. That is a t-shirt. Your dad cream pied your mom. <laughs> Deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Check out our store, teespring.com. Woo! <laughs> we don't have a store. We don't have a store. We need to. We, I mean, it's some... Oh, come Riley. on. Get out of there. Come on. Get, hey, right. come on. Come on. Get, boy. Come on. Oh, come on. Damn it. Luckily, we don't need that thing. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. Well, is all this working still? Check one, two. Check, check, check. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, all right. Moving on from the exorcism. <coughs> Trap. Trap. The M. Night Shyamalan, the next M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. From the... Disturbed mind of M. Night. What, what do they say with him now? Um. Now it just says an M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, I think it just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, like just from M. Night. From Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. Uh, that's all he really needs anymore. Is just like because because obviously we know going in if it's him we know it's going to be a certain type of film. Yeah. Right. And. Well. 
Well, okay, so hold on. Yeah. He has a reputation. My question to you is, this trailer shows you a twist. Is there a twist on the twist? Because if he's showing you a twist in the trailer, there's a twist somewhere else in this motherfucking movie. Yeah. Is the daughter the killer? <laughs> Yeah. Is he hiding it for that? I think the twist is that there's a different, there's another I killer. I feel like it, right? He thinks that everybody's after him and it's right, going to be a different Right, it's going to be somebody else. Yeah. There's another one. Okay. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So he's kind of back to his Hitchcock roots. Um, it, it has all of the hallmarks of a Shyamalan film. Yeah. I think it looks pretty good. I'm interested. I'm interested. I, I, I the just the setup is enough it's for me intriguing. to be like. intriguing. I like that. That's for me to say. Okay. Yeah. Tell me more. That hasn't really been done before. Nope. It's uh yeah. It's unique. Yeah. And I love Josh Hartnett, and I am here for his renaissance, man. Yeah. He is killing it. Bring it back. And. He was fucking. He was great in um, in the Black Mirror episode. Oh, he was so good. Fantastic. Dad. Yeah, he was so good. Yeah, I, I like him in this. Like, kind of. Yeah, this looks good. In this, he looks. Yeah, he looks like, like he's having fun in this. This is just similar to Black Mirror, where you're like, yeah. is he like a fucked up psycho? And it's like, right. Yeah, maybe, sort of. I don't. I can't tell. Like, yeah, he could be. He could be, or he could be a, like a nice dude, or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm here for it. I think it looks interesting, and I already had it on my calendar. Because it's M. Night, and I'm still going to watch his movies. Um, Although I never saw the beach one. Old? Yeah. It was okay. Yeah, I heard it. That's what I heard. It, I heard it, it was, was okay. Middling. Um, it, it, it was interesting, though, because uh, Old, and then he followed that up with uh, The Cabin, uh, Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, yeah. Which was pretty good, but those were also properties that were based on something else. Mm-hmm. One was a graphic novel or comic and then the other one was a book yeah um so he's back to an original story so that's interesting um yeah i, I just think it looks interesting so yeah. i'm here for it cool cool all right final trailer the big one we got a big one guys we got a teaser that the trailer was coming out the next day they did that whole bullshit because oh, yeah, this course. is a big deal it is a everyone deal. knows it, it is it's... the only mcu movie this year Deadpool and Wolverine, Deadpool baby. Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, yeah. Trailer came out. We finally get to see actual. Yeah. Hugh we Jackman. had the teaser. The teaser led up to Wolverine, but never actually showed much of him other than the shadow of his claws in the back of his head. Yeah. This one, we get a whole lot of Wolverine. Yep. Um, but here's the thing. It's very interesting because if you watch what was shown in the teaser and then you watch this, this seems to be from a very specific point in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think there's a lot of it they're still not showing about what this movie really is. Yeah, because there's there's a couple things that obviously like obviously you'll catch if you've watched any of the yeah. MCU stuff. There is a scene with the TVA, yep, and then there's a scene at the very end where they're jumping through a Doctor Strange they portal, are jumping through a portal. Yes, so yeah, yeah, we don't really know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, the only thing that we've really gleaned from it is that like Deadpool has been recruited by the TVA mm-hmm. to it sounds like gather or fix timelines and apparently so is, it, is it just Deadpool and Wolverine jumping through portals so and correcting that's what it seems like it's saving going worlds. to be that's what it seems like interesting yeah um, because there are I mean we already know that there are several different iterations of Deadpool yeah. that Ryan Reynolds is playing in this yeah, and we know that, and we've heard the rumors that there are several Wolverines. There are actors. several different Wolverines. Yeah, as well. Um, so yes, now this one they plucked apparently plucked from a timeline where Wolverine's actions led to like the end of the world. 
yeah like, destroyed his world it's basically it's basically the logan wolverine if he didn't die right yeah, that's what i'm wondering or is it a is it a thing where he didn't kill gene gray yeah when she becomes the phoenix and she killed everyone except him because he can't die yeah and maybe he and he didn't have the strength to he kill her have, so he yeah, let down so he their world let down their world and failed them sure maybe could be i don't know um that would be a funny angle because it's, right? it's it's enough there's you know the enough meta stuff there to make fun of the last oh, yeah. brett ratner film for sure and, yeah and, and of course bring his name up too so oh yeah oh they're gonna bring it up yeah they're gonna bring it up um i mean i'm on board for this i love deadpool here's, i love hugh jackman here's the thing yeah i'm gonna see this movie of course i i have to admit though i'm I'm very like, I don't know. I'm not like excited about it. I'm I'm. I don't know why I'm would worried, be excited, man. Why? What are you worried about? It's, it's just a Deadpool movie. It's Marvel. It doesn't matter. It's just a Deadpool movie. It's not a Deadpool movie. It is, it is a Deadpool a Marvel movie. Deadpool movie. No, there's. I guarantee you, there will be no difference. I. That's what they I'm basically hoping. let him come in and say, "Yep, yeah, do what you did." That's what I'm hoping. That's what they're doing. Oh, I hey. <laughs> I'm hoping. I can't. I just can't. Like I can't let my guard down until I see it. Like it's just that's the sad reality of where we're at with Marvel movies. It has the TVA in it. It has portals. It has multiverse stuff. It has all of the like little stink of Marvel that I'm not into. But it looks like a Deadpool movie, so it has yeah. me like concerned. That's it. I don't know. That's it. That's all I'm gonna okay. say. That's fine. Besides that. I've liked what we've seen in the trailers. I yeah. love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. It's great. Deadpool is Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds is Ryan Reynolds. He's ba- yeah. he, they're the same person. They're the yeah. same thing. Of course. Always down for Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <sighs> Again, it's just it's just the Marvel part that has me worried. I wouldn't worry about it. But I we'll really see. wouldn't. Yeah, we'll see. Um And people are like and and there's a lot of stuff in the comments where people are like, "Oh, this better save the Marvel." It's not here to save anything. This isn't guys. here to do anything. I'm like, you should still be worried about the next Marvel movie. Yeah, of course. It's not going to be anything like this. No. Again, that's what I'm saying. This is Deadpool wearing a Marvel coat. Yeah. That's all it is. And he will shed that coat when he chooses to. And and they will gladly do it. Yeah. Because it will make money. Yeah. This movie will make a billion dollars. Yeah, and they can always and they can always claim too, like, well, it's not really part of the Marvel, you know. I mean, it's gonna again. That's part of, part of the multiverse jumping and doing all this stuff is that he's out there doing whatever he's doing, yeah, without tying into the main stuff unless they choose to. Yeah. But really, I mean, honestly, at this point, Deadpool is Ryan Reynolds' baby. He gets to decide. If they come up and say, we want to do this, and he says no, they're not going to do it. Yeah, what are you going to do, recast Deadpool? You're not going to recast Deadpool. <laughs> well, at some point they will recast Deadpool, but... Thomas Middleton. <laughs> no! <laughs> we can't put Tommy Mids in everything. Damn it. He, you're right, no, he's already the Joker. He's the Joker. We want him as the Joker. Yeah, he's our dream Joker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm excited. I think it looks fun. It, it gives me the feeling of seeing of seeing Deadpool and Deadpool Two, and that's all I care about from a Deadpool Wolverine movie. Just to yeah. be like, give me Deadpool, and now add actual Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I'm there. That's all we wanted for years, and they got they gave it to us. I'm Ooh. telling you right now, this is the smartest Hopefully. thing Marvel could have ever done. Is to just be like, you know what? What do you want to do? And they're like, we want Wolverine and we want Hugh Jackman. And they were like, you know what? Let's do it. And he said yes. That's the crazy thing. He After, only said it because of Ryan Reynolds. Of course he did. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. He still said yes and he's doing it. Yeah. It's there. They've already done it. Yeah. We're just having to wait. Man, I hope they I hope they make fun of like the greatest showman or something and have him sing. I hope they do too. There's so much. There's so, there's so much. much there. Yes, there's, there's so, so much, much meat on those bones. Yeah, there's so much meat for Hugh Jackman. Mm. Yes, man. 
And I think he's here for it. I think he's here to make fun of himself. Yeah. And to everything he's ever done. The 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 dismissive like calling him lady is oh it was the comedic timing on that is so fucking good. Yeah. It was good. It's such an understated little performance. Yeah. I love it. It is good. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a blast. I, I, hope, be I hope it's good. I'm not worried about what it's going to do for the MCU. I'm just here to a watch fuck. a fun movie. That's what movie. I'm saying. I don't fucking care about the MCU I don't MCU think it's anymore. going to do anything for the MCU. I just want to watch a good Deadpool Wolverine movie. Yeah. And if they sprinkle too much MCU goofball TVA, but I don't think they will. Whatever bullshit in there, it's going to be like. Who cares about Ugh. the TVA? That's a I don't care about the in. TVA. And the TVA is still a cool. Loki was one of the cooler things they've done. It is until the end. No, even the end was great. Well, the they turned, they turned him into a fucking dude. Infinity Stone. They turned him into the fucking Time Stone. I mean, they turned him into a Time Tree. Look, man. Fucking. I don't understand. What's your problem? It was. It was stupid. It was fine. It was stupid. It was fine. That nah, was stupid. <sighs> oh, Jesus Christ. Man. Leave him alone. Just leave Loki alone. Let him do Loki stuff. No, I think that was their way of saying he wanted to stop. He's done. So we put him as the central part of all time. You think Tom Hiddleston is done? Yeah, I think Tom Hiddleston's yeah. done. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's been and playing it for so long. But that's dude. the unfortunate reality of, of the MCU is that the actors will be like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> He'd been Loki for 13 years, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a long time. Fuck. Yeah. That's a long time. So I get it. You know? And yeah, so they sent him out that way. Where he's still a part of this universe. He's basically the core of this universe, but they never have to use him again for anything unless they want to. Yeah. They can now focus on She Hulk, too. Exactly. Get the good stuff going. Perfect. <sighs> All right. Um, okay. That's it for trailers. That's it for trailers. Let's dive in. Let's do it. Talk about this week's topic Oh, Fallout. Fallout. The Amazon Prime video yep. streaming series. Yeah. Got one season, eight episodes. Yeah. Based on the popular RPG open world video game franchise Fallout by Bethesda and Obsidian. Yeah. So one time. Mm-hmm. Bethesda, mostly. Mostly Bethesda. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what did you think of the TV series? I loved it fucking great i thought it was great i loved it i absolutely loved it i i was so shocked at how good it was yeah which i shouldn't have been like we know jonathan nolan is great well we know he can be we great. know he can be great so i never watched person of interest person of interest was okay i, and I heard it was okay it. and i heard like but i heard like as it went on it became like such a bigger idea kind of thing yeah that it, it morphed so far from what it was in that first season or so. Um, and I love the first season of Westworld. We'll talk about first it. First season of Westworld is one of the greatest seasons of television I've ever seen. This is this is almost another Westworld season It is season almost one. another, yes. Like the, the, the... The way they did it. Yeah. The drippings this, of Westworld are all over they, this. They are, for sure. And I, I agreed. I loved it. Yes. Loved it. Yes. It like, so I watched it with my mom. She doesn't know anything about the Fallout games. So I had to kind of preempt and, and, but I was like, hey, I don't want to say too much because I'm sure the show will explain what you need to know. They'll explain what you need to know. And I'm sure the show is also a little different. So it's not going to follow the games exactly. Yeah, right, right, right. Although I know that they are, it is technically canon. Todd Howard has said it, like it takes place yeah. in between somewhere. It's just something separate. Yeah. Uh, but it's all part of the same universe. Uh,. <sighs> She was confused, to say the least, with the time aspect of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, I get it. To the point where I had to like pause it. I'm like, we're like halfway through the series. I had to pause, and I'm like, what are you confused about? And she's like, that ghoul guy looks like the whatever. And I go, oh my god. And I'm like, we're on episode four, and you don't know that that's the same dude. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I had to like sit there and ex- explain it to her. I was like. The ghoul is 
is the guy from the beginning yeah. before the, the bombs dropped or while the bombs were dropping. I'm like, that is the same guy. Yeah. And like it it just it like it took a moment for her to like to sure. for it to all click. And then she's like, I don't understand. So it was like this whole discussion of what the drugs do and yeah. you know, whatever and yeah. So that was interesting. Sure. It's also interesting because it's like for us, it's just like well, it's it's Walton Goggins. So like, how do you yeah. not know that? Yeah, that's how do you a, not? Know? He, yeah. I mean, even under the makeup, he sounds the same. She didn't think he did. What? Yeah, she's like, well, the make. She's like, well, the makeup really like makes him look different. I didn't really like, but it, it was it was it was when she, he says a certain thing in one of the episodes. She was like, wait a minute. She's like, that sounds like the guy. She's <laughs> like, is that the guy? And then, then it clicked finally. Yeah. But yeah, for the longest time, she was like, I. And I guess it's because maybe in the first couple episodes he doesn't really speak much. Although he doesn't, he does, he does in like he the does. first episode. Yeah. Like even again, as a, as the ghoul, he talks a lot. Yes. Not, yeah, that's the whole and thing. And his like the his drawl and like yeah. everything, it's the same. I'm like they made a point of him being a dressing up as a cowboy at the beginning, right. so that when he's a cowboy later, it all you you connect the dots. Yes. Uh, Okay. Now, well, now, that being okay. Spoilers. Yeah. For, spoilers for Fallout. For Fallout. Um, go watch it, guys. Yes. I mean, it's go it's all it. available. This is not something you have to go pay money for or whatever. Everybody already has an Amazon you, Prime. Membership. Almost everybody has a Prime membership. If yeah. not, I th- torrent it. Torrent it, or or on to honestly, it's worth it. It's worth getting. Yeah. You honestly. can do Prime monthly. You don't yes. have to do the fucking whatever. You can get Prime Video. It but is so good. Yeah, it's worth it. It is it is worth watching. That being said, when because that was confusing for yeah. her, when the reveal happened that there were two more people that were at least two more that were live and acting yeah, yeah, besides yeah. all the people who were locked in their yeah. chambers or whatever. It oh my god, it was like <laughs> I was like, "Mother, what in the fuck?" And she's like, "I'm going to rewatch this whole show cuz I'm so confused." Jesus. So, yeah. Well, okay, but that's but that aspect that that stuff yeah, that was what like for me was total Westworld oh, yeah, for sure. Man in Black, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. like same thing. I was like the cowboy imagery, the yep. fact that he's from the past and mm-hmm. he's here in the present Correct. slash future. Right. Then the reveal that there's more. There's more characters from before the bombs. Yep. Good shit. It was really good. Yeah. Really well done. Uh, well written, yeah. Uh, like, uh, so I am not a huge Fallout guy. Like, I think I played the original Fallout, and I think that's the only one I've ever played. Jesus, I'm familiar with them just because in the circles we travel in, people talk about them all the time, and I've read stuff about them, and I've seen memes, and I've seen all sorts of stuff. So I'm familiar, but I've never actually played any of the games. Um. This felt so. What they did was captured because I I I thought about this while we were watching it, while Leanne and I were watching it, and then I read an article by somebody who talked about it, and I was like, yes, that is how I felt. Each of their characters, the main three storylines, mm-hmm. are basically how someone would play the game. The game. Yeah. Right, so they did a masterful job of that. Yeah, of showing the different ways that you could play. Um, That's why I was listening. I was listening to a, uh, one of my podcasts that I listened to, and they had watched the first two episodes, and they were like, they were like, yeah, they're like, you know, it's, it's great, and you know, and they, they they enjoyed it. Yeah, but they were like, man, they're like, Maximus is such a lame character, and I was like, <laughs> oh, you guys are like just flat out fucking wrong. I'm like, he is a fantastic character. Yeah. Because he is he is the neutral, he is the character that like if you're playing the game and you just decide fuck it I'm gonna do this yep or like fuck it I'm gonna do this yeah. I'll, I'll be good in this instance I'll be bad in yeah. this instance you I'll just, do you're at whatever your whim is yeah at that point yeah whereas you can play the ghoul as you play dark the whole way and then obviously for her you're playing the light the whole way you're you're good the whole way yeah you know <clears throat> until we get to the end of course and then we blur the lines of every. Which would make sense yeah. because as you play the game and progress, by the time you get to the end of the game, you are a different character than you started as. Of course, and like you're and you're a different moral. Yeah, you know, 
your yeah, your you've moral gone through things and you've you've seen things that start to test your moral fiber. Yeah. And you have to make choices as you go along on whether you're going to stick to what you believe or you're going to do what is necessary to achieve your goal. And sometimes you have to do things on the other side. That's just the way life is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I read the same thing. I was reading some people's, um, like, as they were going through each episode, they were doing, like, discussions and stuff like that. And, like, after the first one, they were like, yeah, it's good. I enjoy it. Maximus's line is kind of like, what are we doing with this? Who is this character? We don't really care about him. Mm. And stuff. And by, like, episode three, they were like, oh, I love Maximus. <laughs> the best. Yeah. <laughs> He's so great. The armor. Just oh like the the um what's his face in in the armor as as Titus. Oh, as Titus, uh Michael Rappaport. Yes, Rappaport is like perfect. The perfect the, person to get in there because the because minute he starts talking, you're like, I fucking hate this dude and I want yeah. him to die so bad. <laughs> exactly. But he's the epitome of that bravado and yep. then cowardice in the face of actual danger. But that was the whole point of of pretty much the entire brotherhood is like everyone is a fucking coward. Of course, they're all posturing. Yeah. But there's an interesting line in the vault with yeah. her brother and the the other guy, I always forget I forget the their names. Yeah. The cousin when he's like you're a coward and he's like we're all cowards. He's like look around. He's like we're in a, we're vault. In a vault, dude. We're not actually out there living. Yeah. But even even the people even the ones on the surface are cowards because, like, even you can make an argument that like the ghoul is a coward in certain ways, like, you know, yeah. not I don't know, not wanting to die and deal with. Uh, he's a he's a coward because like he can't let go of what, whatever happened with his family, which we sure. kind of don't know the full we don't story know still. yet exactly what happened. Yeah, but there was some. Well, we we can piece it together based on what happened at the end and him listening yeah. to the earpiece. But the but the first episode is after the the you know that event. Yeah, it's when he's like a washed up. Yeah, they said he had to pay alimony and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's such a it's such a great setup too because it's like the first episode. Yeah, the first episode is is right when the bombs drop. Yeah. But that's not that's not the beginning for our characters. That's no. that's the end. Yeah. And then we start way further. You know, way before that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah. It makes me excited to see more season two, what they do. Yeah. More of his past. Sure. Oh, for sure. Especially with the reveal at the end that, um, what's his face, was, you know, that he's been around since the beginning, too. Kamagaka? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, her dad. Yeah. Yeah, I love that reveal that everybody in that vault, which is where all of the like the leaders come from is because they were all the executives who get dethawed. I love that there's like nothing in there but them and the brain on the fucking Roomba. <laughs> yeah. Which was great. And then the, yeah, the son, he's getting into one of those cryopods now. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. What is his plan? I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with him. What's going to happen with the with the yeah with the rest of the people in the vault, right? With both vaults now because they've they've, yeah, they've migrated taken over the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole the whole beginning, the whole first episode when like the raiders are yeah. you know the vault thirty two whatever and they come over. It's kind of like like I saw that coming because yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. I was like oh yeah these guys are these are fucking freaks from the surface yeah. So we know something's going to go wrong. But then to find out, no, things went wrong way before they yeah. were down there. Yeah. That was a cool reveal. <laughs> that was pretty good. And he's like, your your Vault 32 wasn't so precious either or whatever. He's like, you know, yeah. they had some secrets. Yep. Yeah, I like that, like, because Fallout, the games, are you know, they're not really like a... There's not like this whole like mystery yeah. element, you know, whatever. It's just like you are, you're a vault dweller, you come to the surface, and now you're in the wasteland, it's just quests and whatever. Yeah. It's a big open world. But I like that they did this. I like that they, they did the weird, like there's there's shit happening in the vault, there's shit happening on the wasteland, yep. there's shit happening in the past. There's shit happening in the Enclave, which we don't really see other than yeah. 
you know, we, we get to see a little bit of it, but we don't really know how they're going to play into it later because they seem to be a pretty big operation. Yeah. So they're going to have some part to play in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. We saw that there was a second bombing. Yes. That, like, the, the, there was, like, a, another reset. Yeah, so that was the, like, shock for her. Yeah. Was that they already had people go out and resettle. Mm -hmm. They built up that new city, and then they dropped another bomb and blew them off the map as well because yeah. it's in their best interest, and it was their plan to continue to keep the people in the vaults. Yeah. Continue the experiments. Yeah. Yeah, the minute his like wife was like, I got I got us in one of the good vaults, he's like and he's like, What do you mean one of the good ones? Where it's like, you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, like something's and then of course the what's this you know, the whatever actor, the one eyed guy. Oh, Chris Parnell. Yeah. From SNL. And he he makes the comment of like, What were they doing to your vault? Yeah. Or maybe the woman says that, but I, uh, one of them. But he's like, what was the, what was the experiment in your vault? And you realize like every vault was a, yeah, yeah, every vault has some experiment going on. Right. Theirs was like genetic mutation and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Really well done. Um, very very well done. Um, the actors were good. Like, um, I liked every little cameo. Yeah, yeah. That was all good stuff. Yeah. Um, I love the dude that does the voice of the robot. From, yeah. From uh, what we do in the shadows. Um, Matt Barry is that what's yeah, his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his name. I think that's his name. I think that's his name. Yeah, Matt Barry. Yeah, Matt Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's great. <coughs> he sells his voice rights. I know that's so good. <laughs> Um, nothing. So like Ella Purnell and Aaron Moten, I've never seen Aaron Moten before. Mm. This is my first introduction. I'd seen Ella Purnell in something, but I never watched any of the stuff she's actually famous for. I never watched Yellow Jackets. Yeah, I never saw her. Um, and there was something else she was on that I never watched. So this was really my first real thing to see her in. I thought she was fantastic. Uh, Walton Goggins. Yeah. He is so underrated. He is so good in everything he's in. Yeah. He really is. Um, I The first place I ever saw him was in The Shield, which, I mean, that's a long time ago now, but that was a standout show. Um, and then to follow it up with Justified, which he was fantastic in, one of the best villains you could ever ask for. He was so good. And it's because he humanizes whatever villain he's playing. You you have a moment in everything I've ever seen him in where he's playing a bad guy. You have a moment where you sympathize or agree with him. And that's the best kind of villain you can have is the one where you go, he makes a point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good in that. So good in uh, vice principles. Yeah, vice principles is so good. That's such a wacky fucking show. Yeah. And he was so good. Some of the, the some of the lines that I, I, I still remember the roast beef line. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, uh, <laughs> dude, uh, yeah, that's a great show. It was such a good show. If you've never seen it, go watch it. It's only a couple seasons. HBO, I believe. HBO, yeah. yeah, go watch it. It's really, really good. It's really bizarre, but it's really fun. Um, but Walton Goggins is the glue man. He holds it all together. Um, not just because he's in all the time periods and brings everything around, but his character is just so interesting mm -hmm. and you just kind of want to follow him and see what he does. Yeah, it's weird because it's like I, I definitely understand the the article talking about the different play styles for the yeah. play or whatever, but like he kind of doesn't fit any sure. of them because he's he switches. Yeah. About halfway, th you know, it's really the supermarket thing, and then watching yeah. himself in the old videos that yeah. he he kind of has that moment. Sure, but I, I wonder if if there because then when you find out the stuff at the end, it's kind of like, well, did he actually have a switch, or was he always I think he's just always that way? Yeah, 
it's like not good or bad. He just wants he just wants answers. Like he just wants his yeah his story to wrap up. Yeah, I mean, it, I think most of everything he's done has just been survival, right? Because he has to get his stuff so that he doesn't turn into a zombie. So he's got to keep doing stuff to get that. And then, yes, as he gets closer to someone who actually has answers, he now is like, where the fuck is my wife? And that just feeds us to be like, yeah, where is his wife and kid? Yeah, but I mean, but what's interesting, though, is that, like, you don't really think that until he says that. That's what I'm saying. You're right? like, you're like, well, they're just they're dead. They didn't survive. Right. You know, it's been. But as we learn, years. yeah. But as we learn, there's a lot of people from the a past. Lot of people still alive. So the question is, what vault are they in? Yeah, are, are they, they in cryo sleep in thirty yeah. one? Have they been awakened and they've been living a little bit? We don't know. I don't know. Is 31, the is that the management vault? That's or what it seems like. Is vault one? I don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Oh. I'm sure we'll find out as we go along. But, oh man. So good. The music is fantastic. Oh, every and needle drop, every great. Every needle drop is so good. Love the old, love the old crooner music. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does it make you say they can do Bioshock? So okay, <laughs> and I even told my mom this. I had to show her a trailer for Bioshock. I was like, this, this makes me want Bioshock so bad because Bioshock is is one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it would make my it would make my video game three by three. Yeah, spoiler for mm-hmm. when we eventually when we do, do that. It eventually, sure. Um, God, Bioshock is just so fucking good. Yeah. It's just the wasteland in the vaults. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I mean, they could do it. But like darker and scarier. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's more horror. Yeah. Um, but it's got the similar aspects of like the drug use, yeah. the like crazy, um, the crazy sort of like uh, political and social ideas. Yeah. I mean, everybody always, of course, says like Ayn Randian yeah, philosophies it is. It and is. stuff. It is, but yeah. and then there's a there's a twist element to it. A whole yeah, there's a whole thing of like who the main character is, and yeah, man, it'd be so yeah. good. It would be good. I, I'm just saying, this shows me they could do it. Yeah, if the you music get the right would be people, very the similar. music would be similar to this. That's what made me go that way because I was like it's so similar in terms of music. Yeah, um, the look of this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love the way it's shot. Yeah. Uh, it looks great. And again, a lot of it on location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in Namibia for the that huge, the, the desert with the yeah. ship and everything. But like, you can tell. Again, it's like yeah. another one of those things against the volume where you're just like, man, like that big piece of crazy technology may have been a waste of money. It's just not not really what we want. I don't think it's a waste of money. I think in in certain applications it works. I just think it's not a it's not a panacea. You can't use it for everything all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like it has its for uses. the impossible stuff. Yes. Use it. But if if you're yeah, if you're copying like a cityscape or yeah. You know, like a rainforest or something that exists already. It's like go film in that location. Yeah. Get the get the tactile, the actual feel. Yeah. Have the people be dirty and and you know. Yeah. Sweating and whatever, like have it look like they're living in this world, not like clean. Right. Like they're a cartoon character, like a video game character popping out of the screen or whatever. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I agree. The only criticism I would have on this is that the the armor stuff looked a little fake sometimes. Yeah. But it also kind of like works with the ridiculousness of the That's what I'm saying. Like of the it idea kind of fits yeah. this world and the way that it's put together. So it sort of fits. Especially because so the thing that threw me off at the beginning was not not the timeline itself. But what the starting year is. 
So everyone, yeah, everyone gets confused because they think it's like the the fifties. They think it's the sixties or something 60s, like that because yeah. that's where that's where that aesthetic is in our life. Yeah. Right. Is so you're thinking, okay, so this is like 1960 something no. that they start. And it's like, no, it's 2077. <laughs> Yeah, so the bombs dropped in 2077, <laughs> it's and like, then it's 219 wait, years later is yeah. where we get the wasteland that yeah. we're yeah looking at. But yeah, it's the idea that like because yeah because even like explain it to my mom of like the robot floating around in the beginning during the birthday party and stuff, and like how the TV yes it had the retro look but it was like a crystal clear like right. image. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was like the idea is that like the the atomic bomb. So like everything is the same. The timelines are the same. Like like for a real world and Fallout, yeah. up to the dropping of the of the two atomic bombs in Japan, and then that is the catalyst for the world being like this is the scariest fucking thing we've ever seen. Right. We're gonna every country is going to devote all of its money and resources into nuclear deterrence, nuclear weapons themselves. Yeah. You know whatever. But like it just it goes on this crazy like arms race of like we have to. We have to build a bunch of nuclear weapons, and then we have to build a bunch of like ways to save us from nuclear weapons, and that's how the vaults come to be and right. whatever. So there is no focus on the internet, computers, right, right, right. like that. None of that shit ever happens. So the technology gets stuck. Yeah, it like stagnates right there. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the explanation for yes, right. But yeah, a lot of people think that like the like those bombs dropped yeah. in like the sixties. That's, and it's that's like, what nah, it it's... seems like because they don't set it for you. Yeah, they just drop you in. Yeah, and go, and so yes, you're using contextual clues to be like, okay, well they're dressed and they feel like they're in the '60s. Yeah, so that must be when this is, and then it talks about 219 years later, and then you see a timeline at one point that shows where the second bomb was dropped, and it's 2200 and something. And you're like, whoa, 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 hold on. Yeah, <laughs> wait a second, that doesn't make sense. And so I had to sit there and go, wait. And so I looked it up and was like, 2077? Oh, okay. Yeah, and like, and again, like the only little tips you get are like the, the floating robot, yeah. the fact that all the cars are battery powered. Sure. Like there's, there's little hints, but yeah, yeah like the, the rest of it is like the clothing, the, the yeah. spy gear is yeah, like... Yeah, it's all retro, retro for us. And, yeah. <laughs> It's just that it's like it's ret- it's it's retrofuturism in that it's it's the retro, but it's like better but than it's what better it was. Than what, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. it looks old, but it's actually more advanced technology. Yeah. So yeah, that was the only thing that I had to wrap my head around. Uh, and the city, like when you look at the city in the back, it yeah. looked like fu- like more yeah, yeah, futuristic, yeah. and you're like, yeah, it what did. the fuck? Like that? Yeah. It's like, wait a second. That's not a city, like a '60s or '50s. It's like city. Right. But I knew that it was like a divergent timeline from us because they yeah. talked about like the war in alaska and like yeah, all yeah. these other things that you're like oh, okay wait so we diverged yeah because he talked about when he was in the, yeah when he, when was he was in the war in the war yeah yeah and you're like what war is this war like what's the fuck <laughs> yeah yeah it was interesting yeah man. it's just it's funny that like the cowboy stuff is like is yeah. still it was still yeah like a thing but it but again it makes sense because like the the that whole hollywood age never happened right it happened much later yeah when they were like well we need we need a way to sell these products or whatever yeah so then it just became a corporate thing right yeah yeah interesting yeah man i was blown away by this show it was so good yeah i think everybody was blown away i think so too i mean i haven't heard a bad thing yet even from diehard fallout fans yeah. Most of them are pretty pretty excited about what they've done and where it's going to go. Yeah. Um, and it did very, very well <laughs> for Amazon. Yeah. So I was interested that Amazon dropped them all at once because that is not their model. And they dropped it like a day early. A day earlier. They kept moving it up. They moved yeah. it up a week, and then they dropped it the day before they decided to, yeah. And I think it was because they were excited for what they had. Yeah. And they wanted to create buzz. And they did. The only thing I'm going to say is they could have extended that buzz if they did their usual drop three episodes and then leak and then do one per week. You could have gotten two full months of you are the only thing people are talking about. Yeah. And with with the way this was written, it was very Westworld season one. Exactly. There would have been a lot of speculation, people talking online. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know. I, I, was, I was just, it was a little puzzling to me. Yeah. Because they don't do that. That's their model is to drop like three episodes and then one a week after that. Yeah, there's like a weird theory that like Todd Howard was like he pressured them because of the next gen updates that came out for Fallout 4 and Fallout mm-hmm. 76 so that there was like a whole thing with like getting the timing of the game stuff. Well, I mean to drop with the with the look, show. He's not wrong. Yeah. Because if you see what the numbers were for video the game, game the games were yeah. They went off the fucking charts. Yeah. I went on to <laughs> Steam, they were all on sale. I bought them. I was yeah. like, "Fuck it. I'm going to start playing some Fallout." Yeah. I booted up Fallout 4 and I was like, boy, this sucks, but <sighs> it's a it's hard to get into. I, I hear it, it is it is good. Like it's yeah. it's gotten better since like launch. Um even 76, people are like, it's a lot better now yeah. that they've like worked out a lot of the bugs and there's more content and shit. It just looks fucking ugly. Yeah. It's built on that Skyrim engine, and like Bethesda's been using that fucking engine now for 20 that years. It is so fucking old. <laughs> it's like, dude, move on from that yeah. thing. It's butt ugly. Yeah. And most people agree that Obsidian made the best Fallout game, which is Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. And that Bethesda doesn't really know what they're doing anymore. So mm. speaking of New Vegas, we got the yeah, that huge tease, tease at the end. Tease at the end, man. Which I knew that was coming because I'm like, okay, we're in California. Yep. And I was like, there's got to be a fucking New Vegas. Because like, they know. They know that the fans of the games love New Vegas the most. Oh, yeah. And for him to be like, he flew away somewhere, I was like, oh, I know where he's going. Yep. It was and, great. Yeah. Great little reveal of the little city yeah, out in the distance. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I know, and and again, not having played it, I even still knew what it was. Yeah, I turned to her and I was like, "New Vegas." <laughs> <coughs> hmm. Oh, man. Well, I mean, there's so much to talk about. It's like we can't. I mean, we haven't even <sighs> scratched really any of it because it's so hard to kind of figure out where to start and right. and everything's so intertwined and twist and turny that it's just like. You just have to watch it and go along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was interesting that, like, you know, I knew as soon as as soon as soon I heard it was good, before I started watching it, you had already watched the first two episodes. Yeah. And we knew this is going to be something to watch. And we were like, we got to talk about it. Then I watched it. And after I was done with it, I was like, I don't know that I necessarily have anything to say other than I loved it. Yeah. And I'm just excited to go back and watch more. Yeah. I don't know that I feel like I need to dissect it. I honestly don't think there's really much to... I mean, like you can sit here and dissect it, but it's like, but what are you really saying right. besides everything they did worked and it was great? Right. I mean, that's the thing. Like, yes, there are like mystery things. It's a Nolan thing. There, yeah. There's going to be mystery aspects to it because even though they don't do the mystery box... They have their own thing. Yeah. Um, and it's always in, it's always there to entice you to continue to watch as they parcel out information. Yeah. Their thing is, their thing is basically like a table with an incomplete, like, jigsaw puzzle. Right. Like, and it's they keep not a mystery you box. A piece. Yeah. It's a, it's a, fu- <laughs> it's a fucked up image that you're yeah. having to solve. Yeah. And you're, it's inscrutable at first. Mm-hmm. But then each time they give you a new piece and you find out how it fits, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can see that section now. Yeah. I understand what that is, but how does it connect to this one? Yeah, and the picture being revealed is also confusing. Correct. You're like, wait, wait, what does that mean, though? Like, yes. Yeah, it's great. So that's kind of what they're doing here, but I think they've learned from Westworld, and they've learned that it's okay if your audience is trying to figure things out. Yeah. It's okay. It's not going to ruin it. Right? The story you're telling is the story you're telling. Don't worry if people get there before you're done. I have a I have a th- I have a theory on all of that, okay? And it actually has to do with what I watched this past two weeks. Okay. And my feelings on it now versus my feelings on it back when I watched it originally. Okay. And it has kind of has to do with all of this. Sure. In that, like, I think there was a time, there was a little time period where 
studios were like upset and creators were upset that the audience was getting ahead of them because it was it was unseen we had never seen that before we'd never seen the internet being used like this before and it was kind of shocking it was a little upsetting but there was nothing to really be concerned about it's all hype yeah it's all people excited about your thing right they're just talking. They're trying to figure things out. The only thing that they're going to ruin is they're just going to ruin it for themselves. For themselves. And this is the thing that I think it took them about 10 years to figure out. It's that much of your audience. It's so small. It's so small. And yes, 10 years would line up perfectly. 2013 yeah. is the movie that I'll talk about later. Yep. That it came out in 2013. And, and I remember all the stuff around it, and I remember how big of a deal it was to lie about the movie, yeah. to flat out fucking lie in interviews and everything. It was unprecedented. Marvel had not even began at that time. They had not began the whole, the whole thing of just flat out lying to the audience. Yeah. Digitally removing things from trailers, exactly all that shit. But that became a common practice because of, I think, the big shit that happened to a couple of creators who weren't prepared for how the internet was going to solve everything. Yep. And it was like Jesus, like you don't need to do anything. You didn't need to lie about anything. I'm saying, just tell your story. Tell your story. That's all that matters. Just tell your story. Uh, again, I think that's what Nolan learned from Westworld season two. Yeah. Was you, it's the death of your story to try and make it so inscrutable that no one can figure it out. Yeah. Because it's not fun. Because it's not fun and it becomes too convoluted and outlandish. Yeah. Because people then start to say, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. Because it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's designed not to make sense because you can't figure it out if it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Your your story being complicated enough to be intriguing, but not complicated enough to where people can't figure it out, that's perfect because yeah. people want to feel smart. They want to exactly. feel like they're, they're figuring this, like they're a little detective figuring yeah. it out. When all the pieces are there, it's not that complicated. Like yeah. this story is not that complicated. No. There are things we saw coming from like a mile away. There are yeah. some things that... Maybe you didn't see coming until it was kind of like right about, right to, about happen. to happen, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, and it, you know, that's great because it's like that. That's as effective of a twist as you want. Yes, you don't want a twist to come out of nowhere completely because then the person can't enjoy the twist. They're sitting there going, but wait a minute, and they're wait. trying to figure out, yeah, what the fuck did I miss? Like, yeah. and then they get mad. Yep. And it's like you don't want that. You want you want no. them to be like, I knew it, and to have that like moment of, I'm a fucking genius. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want. And I think that's what they've learned. And I think that's why season two of this will not have that issue. Yeah. I think they will just continue to tell their Especially story. If they drop it all at the same time. That's true. That's, you know, that cuts a lot of that out too. It does. And maybe that was part maybe of it. Maybe that's why. Maybe they were, they were like, this way we don't have to worry about these people. They can just sit there, watch it. If they're figuring it out, they're figuring it out for themselves. Yeah. I think they were worried that like people online were ruining it for other people. But I'm like, they're only they're running not. for the people who are seeking it out. Trust me. Most people don't see this shit. My mom doesn't get on the internet and look up no. fucking Fallout TV show. No. You know. We do that. We do that. <laughs> and even I've stopped doing that because yeah. I'm like, it. it's just not interesting to me. Yeah. Watching a video, like, and I'll call IGN out on it because they, they're the most egregious. But like watching an IGN video where it's like the 60-something things you missed in Fallout, yeah. the 60 Easter eggs, whatever you missed, and you watch the video and like five of them are Easter eggs and the rest are just like, what the fuck are you talking? Like no one gives a shit about that thing or whatever. Or like yeah. your connection is so thin. That, like yeah. what are you talking about? Those videos suck. Yeah, I'm done well, watching they're them. They're just content. It's just content. That's all it is. Yeah, it's BuzzFeed clickbait bullshit. Yeah. I'm not watching them anymore. I don't I don't care. Yeah. I don't care if I missed whatever. The stuff I did see was enough for me to be satisfied. Yeah. I saw the little the little pit boy. I saw the stim packs. You know, like, like great. Yeah. I saw them, the Nuka caps. We yeah. saw Nuka Cola everywhere. Like yep. a lot of this wasn't really even hidden. It's all out there. No, it's like way out there, like just blatant. Yeah. Because yeah. Why not? Because what does it matter? If you're into Fallout, you're going to recognize all that stuff, and you're going to be like, cool, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not, you're going to be sitting there watching it from a place where you're just like, Nuka-Cola? Oh, interesting. Plus, in the world of Fallout, like this takes place in the world of Fallout, and it is a Fallout property, why would the 
bottle caps be like a why would they be like an Easter egg? They should right. be front and center being used exactly as currency like we they are in the them. game. And they are. And so it's like, oh, okay, that, that's not an Easter egg. That's just the fucking system. Exactly. <sighs> IGN's like, you may have missed. Here's the Nuka caps. How, or how like, could I miss it? How could you miss it? She says, oh, we only accept caps here. And you see Nuka Cola everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Dumb. Yeah. But. You may have missed that they were using Pip Boys on there. What the fuck are you talking about? Again, how are you gonna miss that? They did it all the time. <laughs> Ridiculous. She wore it the whole fucking time. She sat there and dialed she sat there on it. Doing she, everything. Jesus. <sighs> um, yeah. So, although the, the reveal that he's the thumbs up that, guy, that was, was pretty cool. Was good. I did enjoy that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Which makes sense because the guy asked him at the beginning. He's like, "Do do the thumbs up, do the up. thumbs up." He's like, "That's thumbs your whole up. thing." Yeah, yeah, just little things like that, just touches like that, make you go. It just it all comes together. Yeah, and it dovetails and intertwines perfectly to the point where you're just like, ah, it was good. Even the like even the bombs dropping scene was done so well. Yeah. Like yeah. with enough enough drama and enough like you know, action. Yeah. But without being what's the word? I don't want to say like inconsiderate or insensitive, um, but like because like they could have easily done like a thing of like you know they they had the shock wave yeah. hit the windows and shatter the windows everybody freaks out because they they see it yeah and that's that's really just to get us to just to get the characters to see the explosions yeah. happening the bombs being dropped and then to to begin the the panic yeah. whatever but there could have been a scene of seeing people's like fucking skin melting yeah, off you and all that shit and like I just feel but like there was no need for that you don't need it we know what's happening we here. know what's gonna happen yeah it's literally called fallout it's called fallout. Like, we know what's going to happen. So instead, focus on him getting his daughter, getting on the horse. And and yes, the slow shot, aerial shot, drone shot, whatever you want to call it, of them. And you see the bombs. It's just like just mm, going off. Mm, each one. Just so many of them. Yes. That you're like, holy fuck. Yeah. Her, yeah. her comment, is it your thumb or mine? That was he good. turns around and it's just... Yeah. And he's like, no, that's just that's that's not that's not a bomb. That's a whatever he said. He's like, it's just a fire or something. Yeah. And then the fucking shockwave. Whoosh. Yep. Yeah. Great. Very well done. Oh man, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, highly recommended, and I'm very excited for another season. Yeah, I really am. And we're gonna talk about it uh, probably after we talk about another show or two. But I kind of feel like we're in a new age of streaming. We might be. Because there is a lot of good stuff. Three Body Problem was fantastic. Three Body Problem was fantastic. fantastic. This is fantastic. I think we're going to talk about Shogun. See, I haven't watched Shogun you yet because I've been waiting for it. To, I've been waiting it's for it to now. Do, yeah. So finish that. We're going to talk about that. Oh, man, I'm excited. We might talk about a show called Ripley. I need to finish that one too, but I started that one and it's fantastic. It is very good. Yeah. Um, we're, I haven't watched any of A Gentleman in Moscow yet, but I've watched the first episode. I still have. I have like three other episodes that I haven't watched yet, but yeah. it was because I was watching these other things. Eventually, I will get back to that because I enjoy the first one. I like the book, but you know, even even the stuff that we have on hiatus, like we have, you know, speaking of Zach Cherry, we have Severance, Severance still is coming back this year. Yeah. Uh, we still have Silo Season 2 coming back. Silo is fantastic. Foundation is coming back. That is fantastic. There is a lot of good stuff right now. Rings of Power. No, we're not going to talk about Rings of Power. <laughs> but as much as, you've, as much as you've come to realize The Last of Us is not necessarily a fantastic adaptation, it is still a good show. It is a good show, yeah. It is a good show. It's a... Um, uh, it's a different, yeah. The Last of Us is a different thing, but but it, it's interesting because it's getting because it's getting two more seasons yeah. to to do the second game. Yeah, you have more breathing room. I'm like, there could be more infected. There could be more. True. This, this could be now. We're getting truly what it should have been. True. Um, but I think even the first 
First season, season is good. It's, it's good. strong. Yeah. It, it is good. It's, and, and, and really what matters is strong performances. It's uh, the relationship. Yeah, the relationship's there. It's it, like you buy it, you believe it. Yeah. The world, the world building is there. Yeah, it's I good. Think it's good. The scenery, like the, everything <sighs> looks good. The way it's yeah. shot looks good. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. well written. I mean, you know, Mason, as much as people, some people complain about him, he's uh, a great writer. He's a great writer, guys. If yeah. you haven't seen Chernobyl, I highly suggest you go watch. Again, Chernobyl. I mean, we've had yeah. a lot of good stuff the last couple of years, and it's just getting better and better. So I just wish movies would get back on track. I think we're starting to I, get I there. I think we're getting there. And it's, I, I, again, I, I think, think the pandemic been, fucked up a lot oh, of it shit did. for yeah. a long time. Yeah, it did. And we're finally coming out the other side. The pandemic and the strike were kind yeah. of like related. Like yeah. oh, in a way it was like it just it's like the pandemic led to the strike. Yeah. And then and now we're done with all of it. To see that the first Omen is getting like fantastic <laughs> reviews. I'm kind of like, I think we're there. I think the movies are back. Yeah. They're just, it's just now like, what are you into? Yeah. You know, it's not, they're back in a different way, which I kind of appreciate, which is we're not getting the huge Marvel movies. True. We're getting smaller movies. That is true. And I'm like, great. We need more, we, we need, need more, more smaller those. movies. That's true. Yeah. But I, I think this is another rung in that kind of renaissance period right now of, an, of a new era. Yeah. And uh, especially a new genre era. Yeah, there's a lot of good genre stuff right now. Yeah, I, honestly, I think the leader is going to be video games. It's looking pretty good so far. Video games, and I think anime will, anime, will take the I lead. Think is also One Piece. Yeah, another One Piece fantastic. Is fantastic. I yeah. mean, guys, there's a lot of good stuff out. Yeah, uh, and we're going to talk about them. Anime's having a little renaissance too. Anime's getting, we're getting some great shit. Yeah. So, I and mean, we're kind of getting into the second seasons of it. It's taking a little longer, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for Fallout. Yeah. Go watch it. Yes, definitely watch it. Amazon Prime Video, all eight apps. Leave us comments. Let us know how you liked it, what you thought of it. You know, we'd, we'd love to talk about it with you guys. Yeah. Who's your favorite character? Yeah. I think it's kind of tough. It is tough. It is tough. I mean, I'm still going to go with, with the I Google. Yeah, go with the Google. But just because I love Walton Goggins so much. Yeah. But he, really, honestly, I, I like all the characters. He They're has really a uh, he has a straight up like John Steinbeck moment where he kills the other, the yeah, other yeah, ghoul. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just like, oh, but it's good. Like it's it such is a, good because he's it's a kindness. Again, it's it's another moment where you're like, I think we're misreading the ghoul. Yeah, like I don't think the ghoul. Well, is and who I mean we that's the thing. Is. Like again, that's what the flashbacks do for us. Yeah. They show us who Cooper Howard really is. And that the ghoul is him still, just in survival mode. Yeah. Right? But at heart, he is a good man. Yeah. And he has a code. He had a code as a man, as an actor, and he has a code as a ghoul. Yeah. There's a couple of like little, just like great little one-liners. Yeah. When he's like, I've never done a commercial before. And he's like, then again, my wife never asked me to. Or, you know, like, like little stuff like that where you're like, okay, like I get in one line, I get exactly who he is yeah. as a character. Okie dokie has become every fucking Steam review for all the Fallout games. Just <laughs> yep. say okie dokie on them. It's become a thing. Yeah. Um, I love Maximus's line of everyone wants to save the world. They just agree, they just disagree on how. how? Yeah. Good but, it's, line. but it's, yeah, it's true because it's, it's the, it's the same. It's basically just saying, you know, the, the, Road to hell is paved with good intentions. Right. And it is, yeah. It's like everybody everybody wants to or thinks they're doing the right thing. And Right, exactly. No one sees themselves as a villain. Right. Everyone sees themselves as a hero. Yeah. It's just a degree of what are you willing to do? And is that good or bad as someone else sees it? Yeah. Even at the end when he when he comes clean to, to her and he's like, I'm not a good person. Yeah. I you know, I let this guy die and I took his suit and Whatever, and then, and she's like, okay, but like, look at everything I've done since coming to the surface. I cut a guy's fucking head off. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So good. She it's, shot. She shot a ghoul in the supermarket. She did. She had her kill. Yep. Again, trying to do the right thing. I mean, again, she's a good person. Yeah, and those guys were like, oh, you don't want to let those ones out. And, yeah. She doesn't understand the world. She so. doesn't know. She doesn't know. She grew up in a vault. Yeah. Good shit. Love yeah. it. Yeah. It's really good. 
Definitely watch it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. What have you been doing, watching, playing? What do you oh got for boy. recommendations and all that oh shit? Oh, boy, do I got some stuff. All right. So I watched uh, three anime. Okay. Or at least I tried to watch three anime. Uh-oh. Uh, I will tell you the first two that I couldn't finish. Uh, first one, Kaiju number eight. Really? I watched the first two episodes. I'm not going to watch anymore. It's just not for me. Okay. I haven't watched it yet. I think the premise is interesting. I don't even know the premise. So by the end of the first episode, before the very, very last part of it, which is basically like what sets up the whole show, I thought it was a very like pedestrian kind of show. Mm -hmm. Then the thing happens and I go, oh, that's what they're doing with this. Okay, I'm interested. Then I watched the next episode and I said, I'm no longer interested. I'm out. Huh. Okay. Um, Man, people really love the manga. I know. People people really like that. Uh, London loved the first episode. I'm sure he's probably watched the second episode by now. Um, But he loved it and thought it was one of the best anime out right now and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm sure it is for some people. It just didn't grab me. Hmm, Okay. You know? Um, And that's just the way it is. Like, I, I thought about this. And I said, you know what? This is going to happen to me more now because when we were doing our reactions, we almost always chose like highly recommended things or, you know, established things. Yeah. And so most of the stuff I watched, if you go back and watch our anime three by three video that we did, it's on our channel. Um, we talk about the anime that are important to us or that shaped us or that are, we think are really great anime. And uh, by and large, at least on mine for sure, all of mine are usually considered some of the greatest anime yeah. by most people because that's what I was exposed to. So especially as I try like anime that are new for this season or things like that, which I haven't really done in the past, I will start to hit on things that either don't click with me or that I don't necessarily think are bad or just not for me. I have no shame in saying that when every season hits for anime and they drop like 30 new shows, there's maybe one or two that are worth watching. Yeah. Yeah. Like it happens a lot where like there will be full blown seasons that just like fucking suck. And it's like everything in here is like not great. Yeah. There's, there's a show that I'm watching right now that's like not a great show, but like it has a feeling to it that I'm enjoying. And so like it's just a very it's very much I'm having a little connection with this show, but like if someone was like, "Oh, that show sucks and I can't get into it." I'd be like, "Absolutely. Totally understand." Yeah. I mean, I get it. Like yeah. I I've I've felt that way about TV shows, movies, things like that my entire life. Like sometimes they just don't click with you. Sometimes it's just uh, something you're just not into. Yeah, I get it. Um, so I'm in that phase now where I'm trying newer anime and stuff like that, and some of them hit me, some of them don't. And I, I wonder if Kaiju Number Eight is is kind of like solo leveling, where like it starts off a little slow, and then it like it really does take like until about halfway through the season that you're like, oh, okay, Maybe. here we go. Maybe. And then it's like it's fucking banger. But here's what I'm gonna say, and this is uh, this applies to almost anything now. We just talked about how we might be in the middle of a new golden age of streaming and things like that. I am not starved for choice. Yeah. At this point, if something doesn't grab me immediately, I'm probably out. Unless 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 someone comes back and is like, dude. Somebody says you need to watch to this point and then you can make a decision. Yeah. I might do that. Uh, Mine is not. That one I didn't drop because I didn't. I didn't like the story. Um, I didn't like the main character. Hmm, okay. Um, and some of it is, I, and I, I know I'll get railed for this, Uh-oh. some of it is because it is the typical anime character who narrates everything they're doing and every thought in their head, and I hmm. do not like that. I like to come to my own conclusions about why people do things. Um, 
I like them to to show me, don't tell me things. So like a Deku. Yeah, sort of. Okay. It's very similar to that. Okay. Uh, honestly, yes. Yeah. Because a lot of people like Deku because of that. See, and I'm not that guy. Well, no, not because of that. Because they like Deku because they see themselves in Deku because he's pathetic and then he becomes sure. strong. And yeah. Yeah. Class, the classic sure. glow up anime character. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, um, there's there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of um, like the school day stuff, the, the little comedy ones where like the main character is like a kind of like pathetic guy. And then like mm-hmm. he, you know, like the classic like cat planet cuties and the ones where like a girl fault like chobits is like a like a classic anime of like girl alien thing appears and like he falls in love or you know she falls in love with him and there's like a harem and he's like a pathetic loser but like doesn't doesn't want these girls that are all falling for him for some Mm -hmm. reason and you're like what but yes like every time he does anything he says exactly what he's thinking Mm-hmm. He he's in his own head like all the time talking about the girl that he does like, mm-hmm. even though all these girls like him. He he wants the attention of this other girl. Mm-hmm. He talks about how he's a loser, you know, all this shit. And it's yeah, I get it. it it's it's yeah, but that's just is, not me, for me. Yeah, to me that is anime. I know. So I'm like, that's what a, I'm saying. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. And usually, like when I come in contact with it, it's a turnoff for me. Oof, okay. But that's why if you look at mine, most of my anime that I love they're, don't do that. They're but they're non conventional anime. Exactly. Yeah. I like non conventional anime. Yeah. I like Western style anime. <laughs> Oof. That's just me. Yeah. That's just the way it is. All right. Um so two episodes, I'm done. Okay. Uh I watched Heavenly Delusion. I don't know what this one is. Which was a uh, anime from last year. Um so I'll, I'll describe it this way. It is The Walking Dead meets mm. The Promised Neverland. Mm. So I got six episodes in and I'm done. It, it just didn't grab me. I gave it the six because... I kind of felt like, well, maybe, maybe it'll, you know, really may giving it just a couple episodes felt a little like shallow. So I wanted to give it a little more time. Um, but I got about halfway through the season and I, I decided, nah, I'm done. Um, just didn't really grab me. Characters were okay, but not compelling to me. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember this one coming out. Yeah. But yeah, I think um I think this is one I got from Garnt. Okay. Um I think he highly recommended it from that season and I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. I mean it's production IG, it has good ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it just didn't grab me. So uh, again, I'm if I'm not like hooked, I'm not gonna stick it out probably. So I could drop that one. All right. Um, but I did watch another one that I watched all the way through called My Home Hero. Um, this is one that is I don't know this one either. more of a um, thriller. It's about a just average like salary man who um, witnesses his daughter's boyfriend talking about beating her and then planning to swindle her out of her inheritance from her grandparents. And he ends up killing the boyfriend who turns out to be part of the Yakuza or part of a mob or something. And so then, (coughs) then it becomes, it becomes very like death note with no supernatural element to it. Huh. It's about outwitting these people by being like, they know something happened. They suspect something happened and he has to, his wife finds out and she immediately helps him cover up and do this stuff. And it's only 12 episodes. Hmm. It goes pretty quick. And it's, it's really just about the cat and mouse and staying one step ahead of these people that are really trying to figure out 
you know, number one, what happened to him because they make him just disappear. Then they figure out he did die. And then they try and figure out who killed him. And it's actually pretty good. (laughs) It's not bad. Um, There are moments in it where it's a little outlandish. Um, the coincidences that are involved and stuff like that. But that's just a contrivance you have to take sure. for this. I mean, there's that kind of stuff in Death Note and pretty much anything that's like this. Yeah. Um, but in general, I thought it was well done. I enjoyed it. Okay. You know, and it, and it definitely kept my interest. It kept me, it, it almost always ends on like a cliffhanger kind of thing. So it keeps you going, oh my God, I gotta watch the next episode and see what happens. How does he get out? It's almost like Breaking Bad in that way. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like always like, oh, how's he going to get out of this fucking thing? And then he does. And then you're like, oh, shit. Hmm. So it's worth a watch. If you haven't seen it, haven't heard of it, check it out. My Home Hero. Hmm. I think it's it's an interesting okay. one. Um, okay. So, yes, I watched Ripley. I finished Shogun. And I started The Sympathizer. I don't know what the sympathizer is. We watched the trailer and talked about it last time, you motherfucker. It's the one that's uh, by Park Chan Wook. Yes, Rob Dan <laughs> Jr. Yes, okay. yes. I just forgot the title. Okay, uh, two episodes out so far. It's on HBO. Um, it is fantastic. We are definitely gonna have to talk about that one as well. <laughs> okay. Um. So. All right. So I got to watch the sympathizer now. Yes, you got to watch sympathizer. You gotta Shogun. finish Shogun. You gotta finish Ripley. I didn't even start Shogun. Oh yeah, you gotta watch Shogun. Finish Ripley. Yeah. Um, okay. So because I watched The Sympathizer, I took today to decide to watch Decision to Leave. How was it? It was good. Good. It's not great. Okay. It's not Handmaiden level. Okay. Um, but I would say, in terms of filmmaking, it is. Um, Better than old boy. Okay. He is at the top of his craft at this point. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to, and you'll see this in The Sympathizer, definitely. He knows how to manipulate and allow for different times to happen all in one frame. Okay. And do it in one shot. It's Let so me good. ask you this. Yep. I know the answer for Decision to Leave already. Okay. Is the sympathizer uh, mostly subbed? Sympathizer is uh, well. It is mostly in. Okay. First episode mostly subbed. It's okay. in Vietnam. Okay. Second episode mostly English, with little bits of sub here and there because they are in America, and I think the rest of the time he's in America. Okay. Um, but there will be times because anytime it's just the Vietnamese people, even in America talking, they almost always talk in Vietnamese. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you do have to, yeah, you do have to like pay attention. Yeah, not a problem for me. I'm just yeah. trying to, you know, like know. my yeah, mom yeah, yeah. will, yeah, not um, watch it. But you, what about but Shogun? Shogun is primarily Japanese. subbed in Japanese, yeah. Okay. Like there are bits in there where it's like they're speaking English, but you're supposed to in your head say that's Portuguese. Um, but they do it in English. Interesting. But anytime they speak in Japanese, it is always subbed. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Um, and it is a lot of it. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of it. They focus. Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, once you watch it, we'll do an actual episode because there is a lot to talk about with Shogun. Okay. Um, Sympathizer, fantastic. Decision to leave. So this is what I would say it is. Um, it is his vertigo slash basic instinct. <laughs> I've never seen vertigo. Well, you should. I know. And uh, I have seen Basic Instinct. Yeah. So it's kind of funny because it's almost like what Basic Instinct would be if Verhoeven and Esther House were not as um, loud as they are. <laughs> if it was a little more reserved, that would be this. Huh. Okay. But also Vertigo because of Obsession. Let me ask you this. Yes. Is it weird? No. Damn. It is pretty much a straightforward thriller. Okay. The trailers made it seem like there might be something supernatural in it. There is nothing supernatural in it. Fuck. But it is still very good. Fuck. Stop. 
It's worth watching. It's, it's, it's one that like I keep wanting to like. Yeah, watch I finally, I finally we... did it. Like I seriously, I did think about watching Monkey Man. Yeah, because I have it, and I was like, well, I was gonna go see it in the theater. I was, and that's an easy one to watch. It's it just is. gonna be all action, exactly. Yeah. But I was like, no, you know what? I've been. It's been sitting on my thing for so long. I mean, that movie came out two years ago. I know. Let me sit down and read a movie. Let me sit down and read a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I did, and I'm all the better for it. I'm happy I watched it. Okay. It's so good. Um, yeah, well acted. Uh, the the young woman in it, like she looked so familiar to me that I had to look her up, and I had seen her back in Ang Lee's Lust Caution back in like 2007. Hmm, weird. And that's the only other time I've seen her. But I recognized her again when I saw her because she was so good in Lust Caution. She was a lot naked in Lust Caution, too, so that might have played Hey-o. a part in why I remembered her. She does not get naked in this, though. Damn. There's no nudity in this one. Oh, fuck this movie. <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah. Honestly, I was. Kind of, that is surprising for him. I was like, wow, okay. But very well done. He's so just on a technical level. Yeah. He's like Fincher. He's the Korean Fincher. He's just so good. He's great. It is really good. I highly recommend it if you haven't watched it. Uh, and then I also went to see a movie last night that we were going to go see, but I got sick. I did go see Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, the new Guy Ritchie movie, yeah. uh, based on a true story, Operation Paperclip, which uh, was apparently declassified from Churchill's official documents uh, back in 2016. That's when it actually came to light that this happened. Wow. And they made a movie out of it. Perfect. So... I think this movie, I think it served two purposes. Hmm. I think it was, even though I think Man from Uncle works as well for this, I think this was Guy Ritchie and Henry Cavill both saying, let us make a Bond movie. You want Guy Ritchie to make a Bond movie? No, no. I'm saying Guy Ritchie is saying, let me make a Bond movie. Here's what I can do. This is how I can do it. Because this is the most un-Guy Ritchie movie I've seen from Guy Ritchie. Now, I haven't watched Aladdin. Uh, but no, even uh, Aladdin, I think, looked, based on the trailer, like I've a Guy seen, Ritchie movie. I've seen Aladdin. It is, Aladdin is Sherlock Holmes with... That's what I thought. With Aladdin. This yeah. is not. Interesting. There are so little Guy Ritchie-isms in this movie. There's no, like, overhead guy running through, like, a street and jumping through windows and shit. And- nope. Wow. It's pretty much a straightforward World War II spy mission. Okay. Now, that said, Henry Cavill and Alan Richson especially look like they are having the time of their life playing these characters. They were having so much fun. Yeah, I think people caught that with the tongue sticking out while he's shooting yeah. people in the he's, trailer. He's having fun. Yeah. Uh, and Alan Richson... Alan you, Richson's is the guy with the glasses, right? Yes, he yeah, plays yeah. Reacher in the yeah. Amazon Prime series. If you have not watch, watched Reacher, you need to watch Reacher immediately. It is one of the best things going on TV for just brainless action. Even I mean, though you know what I'm going to say about him. Go ahead. I'm going to say, if you haven't seen Blue Mountain State... If you haven't seen Blue Mountain State, go ahead and watch it. You'll see a whole different Alan Richson. <laughs> he, but... But... <laughs> yeah. Honestly, in his defense, I'm like, fucking the transformation from Blue Mountain State to Reacher yeah. is incredible. It is. And the fact that like he can do either one True. is is great. I mean, now, the range is there. What I will also say is, and there is a huge fan campaign for this, Alan Richson as Batman. Whoa. There is sequences in this movie with, of him with a bow and arrow. Whoa. And fighting close combat in these in in this tanker ship, that you will say, "Holy shit, that's fucking Batman!" He is so good. Number one, he looks like Batman. Yeah, yeah. If you put him in the cowl, he had. I know Ben Affleck has. No, I mean, he's got the like the jawline jaw and shit. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he has the physique of comic Batman. I never thought about like, that. Like, traditional. And, again, if you watch Reacher, I don't know if Alan Richson is actually intelligent, but he seems intelligent on that show. 
he will break things. I told you before, it's like a, it's actually like Batman. It's, it's Batman Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. on that show. Hmm. Cause he can fuck you up physically, but he will also fuck you up mentally. So I am on board. Here is my dream now. Alan Richson, Batman mm -hmm. versus Tommy Mids, Fuck. Joker. Fuck. Imagine Thomas Middleditch as the clown prince of crime against Alan Richson, Batman. Just seeing the two of them and the physical difference, but having them match wits against each other would be worth the price of admission. With Sidney Sweeney as Poison Ivy? Oh, my. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just saying. And Isa Gonzalez as Catwoman? Ooh. I can see it. I could see it. Which again And Isa, Matt Barry is the penguin? Isa Gonzalez. Hey, that's not bad. Isa Gonzalez in this movie. Uh, yeah, she's in the movie, yeah. <sighs> she looks hot as shit in the trailer. Nineteen forties era. Baby. Victory curl in her hair. Shooting guns. <sighs> oh, dude. She wears a dress in this to look like Cleopatra. That leaves so little to the imagination. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was a fun movie. Okay. It was fun. It's not the greatest movie you've ever seen. Yeah, but you know what? But it, I, I had a blast watching it. I don't want the greatest movie I've no. ever seen anymore. I want fun movies. I want fun movies, and this was a fun movie. I've been on a kick of fun movies lately. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I like it. I, I'm in, I'm enjoying myself because you go out of them and you're happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good voice. That's a good noise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's my spiel. I, I kind of want to see it in theaters, but then I'm like, I know it'll be out. At fucking... this point, you probably just wait. Yeah, because it'll be on streaming in like two or three weeks. And then you watch that, and you tell me Alan Richson could not be Batman and would not. Probably not. He, I, I'm just saying he might be the best Batman we've ever had. Okay. I'm just okay. saying. Let this be his audition for Batman. Let this you know be what? Henry Cavill's audition for Bond. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to say it. Okay. I'm going to come out and I'm going to fucking say it. Okay. We've never had a buff Batman. That's what I'm saying. Ben Affleck is... Was the closest, was the closest we got. we've got, and even he was I don't just buy it. even he was just like he looked like he didn't drink water for two days and just pumped right before they shot him. Yeah, no, no, Alan. Like, so here's the thing: Alan Richardson in again in Blue Mountain State yeah. was a buff dude. He's a buff jock guy. Fast forward to to Reacher, he looks like a dude that could punch a fucking hole through my face. Exactly. So I'm like, I, I don't buy Ben Affleck. Him, I'm like, dude, I'm. I'm I'm kind of having a hard time believing that like you you don't have a cane with you, <laughs> like you're you're so old. Sure, but yeah, dude, like a buff Batman who's just like, just wrecking people. That's what I'm saying, dude. He can too. Like <sighs> even as as Reacher, he fucks people up. Yeah. But man, the fight on the boat in this See, when you with said, a knife and an arrow. That's when. So when you said <sighs> arrow, bone arrow, I kind of thought. Arrow, Green Arrow. He's too big for Green Arrow, but no, because Green Arrow in the comics is fucking huge. I know he is. Huge. I know. I mean, they're all they all are. They all are. But what about I, Green Lantern? I don't. Um. I again, Batman is. You want him to be. You want him to actually be physical because Green yeah. Lantern will be using like magic. Exactly. Shit. That, like, it, no, he, no. He don't need muscles. For you that. don't need muscles for that. Batman should be fucking huge. And he is. Yeah. He literally is. He's not quite right for Superman, but yeah, no. could, yeah, but Batman, Batman and Bruce Wayne. He could do it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him in a suit. He looks good. He could definitely do it. And again, you put those glasses on him, and he becomes cerebral. So, and it looks like that guy could never be Batman. He's a nerd. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he played a normal role. Sure. <laughs> and people would be like, "That guy's a salesman." Sure. That guy, sure. that guy's a salesman. What? Yeah, yeah. The Venice Beach bodybuilder. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, he sold me my computer equipment. <laughs> yeah. But 
The point is, he looks like he would be a billionaire playboy. With an, at, with an Oreo in his ass. But at night, he's stirb comp, curb not stirb comp. He's curb stirb stomping comping. people. Yeah. And then eating Oreos out of his ass. Okay. Again, Blue Mountain State, watch it. It's great. It's great. It is. It's not great, guys. It's great. Look, anything that was Steve's favorite fucking show is not great. Hold on now. Don't. The Inbetweeners is fucking great. That, But Blue Mountain State was his favorite. The Inbetweeners he liked, but Blue Mountain State was his favorite fucking show, dude. You're right. You're right. And yes, you're we right. all like The Inbetweeners. The Inbetweeners is fucking great. That's great. God, when they run over that squirrel. Jesus that Christ. Oh, it's just such a good... <sighs> I need to go back and watch it again. It's been too long. Bus wankers and then oh, God, dude. they can't pull forward. That's now a that is a current TikTok like really? Instagram reels little trend is that joke. And I'm like, that's from the Inbetweeners TV wow. show from way back in the day. That was a long time ago. Jesus. Wow. Okay. Watch the Inbetweeners. Don't watch Blue Mountain State. Just yeah, watch exactly. The, I'll say this for just so you understand where Alan Richardson came from. Watch the Blue Mountain State. I think it's like episode one or two. But just watch the Oreo race. Just watch that, and you'll get it. You'll be like, okay, this guy is fucking crazy. Puts you can also button has to. You can also go to Smallville and find Aquaman because he played Aquaman on Smallville. <laughs> well, there you go. And I think he was even like thinner than he was in Blue Mountain State. So he looked already, like a normal a, guy. He's already been a hero then. Yeah, he was our hero already. Oh, well, then he can't be Batman. Yes, he... Stop it. He can't Come be on. Batman. He's already, been, he's already been in the DC no, Universe. I'm telling you, dude. He needs, he needs to be Batman. All right. all right. Anyway, go check it out. It's good. It's fun. Cool. That's all I got. That's all I watched. I'm going to rattle mine off quick because there's nothing... Okay. Everybody's seen these movies. Uh, we were watching the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. We got yep. through four. Yeah. So we've seen one through four now. Um, they're silly. Of course they are. Dream Warrior was my favorite when I was a kid. Dream Warrior, bizarre. It is fun, but I loved like being able to like pull people into your dream and like being able to do things in your dream. The return of, of the main character from the first one, yeah, to actually kind of like connect this universe and to be like, no, these movies are actually related. Yeah. Um. Larry Fishburne. Larry Fishburne. Yeah, being That's credited right. as Larry Fishburne instead of Lawrence Fishburne. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, then we get number four, mm. whatever. I, two, I think, is still the worst. I mean, two. It's it's such a different kind of thing. Two is so bizarre. It's I'm weird. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you know what? None of them make sense anymore no. because the power changes yeah. all the time. Yeah. And then their version of how to defeat him changes all the time, and they never do defeat him. It doesn't matter what they do. True. Um, but Dream Warriors has the most insane line in it which is maybe not the one that you think i'm gonna say uh-huh. it has the nun telling the backstory oh, of yeah, freddy krueger and his mother amanda krueger yeah who she actually ends up being she is amanda krueger she's yeah. the ghost of amanda krueger yeah. but she tells the story that amanda krueger was raped by a hundred men yeah i remember that and that freddy krueger is the bastard offspring of the hundred men. Lady, that's not how that works. <laughs> first of all... You are not the combination first of, of all, hundred... First of all, you're talking about a series in which a dude comes back in your dreams and kills you. Sure. I don't think logic has anything to do with it She anymore. is saying that 100 cream pies yeah. combined... They, weren't they like criminals? Like criminally insane people yeah. or something? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred criminally insane people's cream pies yep. combined inside of her puss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how and, it works. And at least one sperm from each man's load. Yeah, it became a super sperm. Became that, a super sperm that combined and went in and attached to the egg and fertilized. Yes. And boom, we had Freddy Krueger, who then yeah. becomes a child murderer. Yeah, they they really went with the. You're born this way. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. there is a lot of hey, you never there know. is a lot of evidence for. Yeah, maybe. Not not to say that it's like hereditary or there's genetical. That's the know. thing. It's like is nature versus nurture. Like Yeah. 
But they they went with the not only did they go with the nature thing, but they went with the you are the product of your like genetic yeah makings or whatever, which is not true. Of course not. Which there's no evidence for that. No. Yeah. Bizarre. It is bizarre. I agree with you. Second favorite line, it's prime time, bitch. That's the good one, baby. <laughs> That's the best. Put her head through the TV. Oh, yeah. Good shit. The, ooh, the puppeting him with his tendons? Yeah, I liked. Yeah, that was pretty good. I was like, that's cool. Again, a nice a nice return to the, the freaky-isms of the first yeah. movie that, like, you know, became so classic, whereas the second movie was just nothing but knifing. Yeah. He didn't do any work. Yeah, the first shit. one, like those long arms to go and yeah. down the alley and stuff was pretty the cool. Blender through the bed, yeah, 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 taking yeah, her yeah. to the roof. Yeah. Yeah, it was the pretty claw on the tub. Like yeah. yeah. We got a lot of weird, like he's he's becoming, you know, he's shape shifting and shit. He can yeah. do whatever. And then the second movie, he's like, I'm taking over this kid's mind <laughs> yeah. and body, and I'm just gonna stab people or or you know, just cut them and, and stab them. Although Second movie, yeah, they did put the gym teacher in the bathroom naked, tying him up and whipping his ass with a towel. That's true, over and over again. Well, so that was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of gay subtext in that movie. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it's subtext. I think it's text. It's pretty overt, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so we've done four. We still have three more to go because we have two more of the originals, and then we have the remake. Yeah. And the reviews get worse and worse yeah. as they go. So, Are you going to watch Freddy vs. Jason? Uh, yes, we do have to watch yeah. that too. That was a good one. Um, so taking a break from that, yep. we decided to watch Star Trek. Right, you started last time. Now we're not going back to the beginning. We're not watching Star Trek, the motion picture. We are watching what is known as the Kelvin timeline. Yeah, that yeah. is J.J. Abrams' reboot. We started with Star, Star Trek, Trek. Yeah. 2009. Yeah. Uh, Chris Hemsworth as his father <laughs> yeah. for a brief moment yeah. with uh, What's-Her-Face from How I Met Your Mother and uh, Once Upon a Time. Oh. The, what's her name? Um, shit. She was the one that, you know, the Arcadian. She wanted to save the Arcadian, How I Met Your Mother. Uh, I always forget her name. I don't remember. Anyways. Um, and then Chris Pine. Yep. Becoming Captain Kirk, Obviously. Zachary Quinto, all the, the yeah, good all shit. The, all the people. I was dreading. We watched Star Trek. This was way back yeah. weeks ago. We watched Star Trek. Then I was dreading Star Trek Into Darkness so much that we watched all the Freddy movies. And then we were like, fuck it. We have to go back and finish Star Trek. Yeah. I bought the 4K Blu-rays, the trilogy. Okay. So I was like, we got to watch them. Pop in Into Darkness. And I tell my mom everything about the past, okay. about everything that had to do with this movie coming out, how everyone was so upset. They hated J.J. Abrams. They There was death threats. There was everything because he lied to everyone, Flat a flat-out lie. He said... <clears throat> People watch the trailer. They piece together, especially from the fucking, yeah, I mean, fucking the window stuff. Yeah. They said this is a Wrath of Khan remake. He said this is not the Wrath of Khan. They said Benedict Cumberbatch is Khan. He said no, Benedict Cumberbatch is this guy, and he has a name, John something, something. Who cares? It was like John John Smith. Anderson, John Anderton. No, that's from Minority Report. Uh, <laughs> that's a Matrix too. Uh, yeah, Mr. Anderson. I don't remember. <laughs> It was something. It was John something. Yeah, it was something, whatever. Um, but yeah, he claimed, no, it's not Khan. It's this guy. It's a new villain. This is not the Wrath of Khan. This is not a reimagining or a remake or anything. It has nothing to do with the Wrath of Khan. This is a new story. Yeah. Movie comes out. We watch it. It is a Wrath of Khan remake. Yep. Everyone loses their minds. They hate it. They want to kill J.J. Abrams. They want to burn down <laughs> Universal. Was Universal or was it Paramount? Paramount. Paramount. Movie's fine. Yeah, it's still fine. Movie's good. I liked yeah. it. I was like, this is this is fine. This is a fine movie. The other part that I remember people being mad at was Alice Eve is in the movie, and she's in it just to take her clothes off in one scene and, and show herself in her underwear and say, yeah. bro, like, dude, turn around. Quit looking. Around. Yeah, quit quit looking, looking turn around. And I remember... I remember because I remember the the trend, the fucking little slogan that was trending, which is Star Trek is not sexy. 
Mm-hmm. And then people were mad. All the nerds were mad. You made Star Trek sexy, and that's not what this is. I disagree. You, I think Star Trek know, has always been sexy. You know how many women James Kirk fucked? Yeah. In Star Wars. In Star the, Trek? The, the outfits and stuff. Yeah, I'm like, I, I'm sorry, but I would argue that even the original series was sexy. There was a sex appeal to it. Of course there was. It, it's insane to say. Uh, yeah. So whatever. That was a dumb thing. But anyways, rewatching it, great. Then we watched Star Trek Beyond. Great. Yeah, I love that one. I like the Star Trek movies. Mm-hmm. I wish they'd get their shit together and make this fourth one they keep talking about. There's also now talks that there's a... So there's talks that, that the fourth one is happening. J.J. Abrams apparently has come back as producer. Mm-hmm. He said that they're, that it is happening. They're getting shit together, whatever. It's moving forward. Then Paramount also announced there is a Star Trek origin movie in the works that may st- also still be connected to the Kelvin timeline in a way, mm-hmm. but it's new characters and it's mm-hmm. like a new thing. Mm-hmm. So apparently that got announced like recently and that one they've actually moved. They, they have like a script and whatever. Right. So who knows what's happening with Star Trek. I just, I want them to make a fourth one of these yeah. characters because I like them. Sure. Okay. Um, also, rest in peace, Anton Yelchin. Very sad. Yeah, the bummer. I always forget about that. And when I watch those movies, I'm like, oh, man, too young. Yeah, he died way too young. Way too young. He was a very talented kid. And Leonard Nimoy, obviously. Yeah, well, he didn't die that young. No, but he <laughs> dies and they, they make a tribute to yeah, him in the movie and it's all sad and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, they're great movies. I, I enjoyed them. Yeah, they're good. Uh, okay. Then we watched Mission Impossible because we're now starting our Mission Impossible okay. uh, arc. arc. Yeah, saga, whatever, sure. the anime arc, I guess. Yeah, um, watch the first one. Fucking great. I mean, it's Mission Impossible. It's great. It is. I was like watching it, and I was like, it like starts because I'm like I haven't seen the first one in like a long, long time. So the movie's like starting, and I'm like, this isn't his team. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And like, I didn't realize how long it is before it like yeah. the movie starts. Oh yeah. And then I was like, oh, that's right. I'm like they. They gotta did show the, the one go wrong first. Yeah, like they did the Ethan Hunt is disavowed shit yeah. in, in one. Number one, baby. Then they do it again in like Rogue Nation or whichever yeah. one it was. And oh, I'm just yeah. like, oh yeah, like the, the same shit again. Exactly. But they're pretending like it's new. They're like, oh, he's like going rogue now. It's like, you already did this. Yeah. You did this in one. Yeah. And then my mom was like, I, th- I think John Voight's still alive. And I turned around and I said, mother. You don't put John Voight in your movie unless he's the absolute villain of the movie. <laughs> I'm like, of course he's still alive, you idiot. He's the fucking one who set all this shit up. Spoilers for Mission Impossible, by the way, 1996. 1996, dude. I think, you, <laughs> yeah, I think you're okay. Uh, great movie. Love Mission Impossible. It so I'm excited to work our way through. My mom has not seen um, Dead Reckoning Part 1. I also don't think she's seen Fallout because Ooh. she doesn't remember Henry Cavill being in Ooh. Mission Impossible. And I was like, oh, You're shit. You're in for a treat in that one. Yeah. You're not in for a treat for Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> That's going to be the rough spot. That's going to be the rough one. We're going to get through it. But you'll get through it. Yeah. Just remember there's a light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah. And that light is J.J. Abrams. <laughs> what, I like that one, man. Yeah. That's a good one. Which I'm like, three is good. It's good. It's, it's also good. the weirdest one because like it starts off and you're like, Huh? Like he's got like he's a wife, married. He's married and, yeah, yeah. It's it's, but it was it was like a perfect little reboot. Yeah, and then you get your and then we get our new team. We get the the official. Yep. Simon Pegg team. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, people people do forget though that Ving Rams has been there since the very first he one. He's the first one. So he's in number two. Yeah. <laughs> like I, nobody wanted to be associated with that one. Hey man, hey. Um, I've also been playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. That's my my game of the okay. moment. Nice. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's Assassin's Creed. It's a, it's supposed to be like shorter than all the other ones. So I, was, I wanted to like knock it out. Okay. Um, kind of quickly before getting into Stellar Blade and then going back to Final Fantasy. I still have a, you know big backlog of shit. Um, but no, it, it ends up it, people are like, "Oh, it's a shorter one," and I'm, and I'm playing it. And I'm like, it, it, "There's still it's Assassin's Creed. There's still a ton of shit to do, a big map." But they're like, "Yeah, but it's not as big as like Valhalla." <laughs> I'm like, "Well, yeah, Valhalla was like fucking dumb." Yeah, I mean, it was great. I loved the game, but it was it was dumb big. Right. So hmm. that's what I'm playing. Oh, and I did. You know what? I did watch the Time Machine because you had brought it up. 
like last time you were like, oh, you like the time with the guy Pierce time machine. And I was like, I do like that movie. So I rewatched it. And guess what? You still love I it. I still like well, of it. Of course you do. It's good. It's a, it's a core part of who you are. It's a good movie. It's <sighs> it's fine. I like it. I like that. You know what it is? I like the music in the movie. Okay. I like Jeremy Irons as the villain. Okay. I think he does a sure. decent job. Yeah, there's some problems with the girl and that and all the like f- super yeah. future stuff. But I like the beginning. Yeah. I like the like the whole setup with him and the girl and you know the classic time machine story. Yeah. Um, and then I like I, yeah I like the music and then I like the ending. I like the him taking the bowler hat off and tossing it, and not and him being like oh yeah like I'm not gonna be like the rest of the rest of these people. I got it. I know, I know. That's I'm good. not saying there's anything wrong with you liking that movie. And it's a tight one hour and a half movie. It is, like a, it. it is a, it is. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Plus, the time machine looks good, like the, the classic time machine. Sure. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, it's not my favorite time machine. But it's so similar to the other ones that, like, I don't understand. I think what's... there's a charm to the George Powell one. Yeah, I mean, and I like, I like Rod Taylor a lot in that role. It's just that one's just too old for me. So that's where we differ. Yeah, it's I grew up on that one, I so know. to me, that's my time machine. And I was twelve when that's I what saw I'm saying, the exactly. time machine. So and yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's a core part of who you are. Yeah, yeah. true. But that's fine. I mean, Guy Pierce is good. I love Guy Pierce. He's great. I like great, Guy Pierce. He's great. Know? So uh, I'm, I'm, I won't deride you for it. It's fine. The I'm, moon, the moon breaking. Yes, I remember that. Uh, yeah. I do remember that. I also remember it was directed by his like great grandson or grandson. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. Who's great grandson? H.G. Wells. Holy shit. Simon Wells. Wow. Yeah, Cambridgeshire, England. Yeah, he's like the great grandson or something like that. What else has he directed? <sighs> the Prince of Egypt. Oh, shit, that's a great movie. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Now you want to click oh, yeah, that one back. Save the cat? Save the cat. What the fuck? Mercs? Mars Needs Moms. That's that animated one. Yeah. <gasps> he directed, he directed We're Back a Balto? Dinosaur Story? Holy. American Tale Five O Goes West. Holy shit. Dude, this guy rocks. Wow, man. The only one that sucks is Mercs. I don't think Mars Needs Moms is great. Is it not good? I've never seen that one. I never watched it, but it, it didn't look good. Save, what the fuck would a Save the Cat movie be? I have no idea. It's probably animated. It's probably animated. Yeah. Yeah, the Time Machine was his only, well, I guess until Mercs, but yeah. it was his only non-animated movie. But all those animated ones are great. And they are pretty good. That's true. Wow. So there you go. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um. All right. You got anything else? That's all, you, that's all you got? I also hate that time. I hate the, the tagline, though. Where would you go? It should be, when would you go? That is true. Um, yeah. It, it should be when, because the machine doesn't move. No. <laughs> you move. Hmm. Okay. okay. That's all I had. Okay. Well, right. that's going to do it for this episode. Yeah. Again, go watch Fallout. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know which time machine is your favorite. (laughs) And I will accept time after time as well. That's a good one. Okay. That's the one where he hunts down Jack the Ripper? Yeah. Okay. I will also accept time bandits. Well, but that's not the time machine, (laughs) dude. Come on. I will accept about time. Again, not about that's not the time machine. What's another time machine movie then? I don't know that there really are. They're always like something else. I mean, technically, Bill and Ted, their time machine is a phone booth. 
Well, yeah, that's, doc- that's Doctor Who territory. I know. I could have sworn there was another like time machine movie where. Hmm. I guess I'll accept Steins Gate. Yeah, Steins Gate for sure. The microwave is yeah, of course. Time machine. I mean, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Let us know what's your favorite time machine. What's movie? your favorite time machine movie? Yeah. Um. All right. That's gonna do it for this week. Again, do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Blake and Jeff, or links down in the description below, and we'll see you next time, bitches. Bye. Bye.